Collider Live, ladies and gentlemen, back on a Tuesday. Uh, very special surprise here. We thought we were going to have our guest at uh, at ten thirty, but he's an effort. Came in and he's here. Dan Cook is <laughs> I here. I crashed the party. You crashed the party. How you doing, brother? Good. Hi. Can I do that? Yeah, is that legal? Can. It's legal. I just looked into the camera. It, it, can we start it. over? Yeah, Cody, bring it all the way back, please. Play the music again. And <laughs> thank you so much. We are back here. I, I listen, I don't, yes, sir. I don't want to take over like right off the jump, right? But you're wearing a Yankee shirt right I in know. front of me. I know. And that hurts my heart a little bit. It doesn't. It's not meant to hurt your heart. It's just it, the thing is, I'm sure when you saw it, because he tweeted out yesterday, because he's getting bombarded with all these Spider-Man images, and he's just like, "Am I fighting someone?" Yes, Come I in? thought. Oh, oh, it, but now I understand. It's right. the it's okay. The, it, it's so, and I, I've been getting it since <laughs> 1999 when I, I was at the Boston Comedy Club in New York. Yep. Strangely enough, DJ Nash, uh, creator of. Uh, uh, very little things. Was it called uh, little, Pretty Little Things? Was it called Million something? Little Things? Million Little Things. Million Little Things. Pretty Little DJ, Liars, Million Little that's Things. That's right. I got, I got yep. mixed up. I and got you. DJ Nash had come up to me and he goes, Hey, you know who you remind me of a lot? Like, look like. I'm like, it's Dane Cook. And at the time, I didn't know who you were. Right. And I was like, Is that a compliment? He's like, Yeah. He's like, but he's a Red Sox fan. Uh, and, and he said that? Yeah, back in that's, uh. what I, that's what I said when you said that. I was like, That's exactly what he said. Um, but then, flat, fast forward uh, back in 2000. Okay. Where I met Jay Davis. Yes. And Jay. Uh, Jay's good, a comedy guy out yeah, here in LA. Good friend of yours. Yes. And uh, and Jay uh, <laughs> gave me a spot at this place, Dublin's. Okay. To which, and, and Dublin's is where you, it's where you cracked. Man. It's, I mean, honestly, one of the greatest, you know, possibilities of my life was performing there. Right. And that bar, when you think about it, that bar shouldn't have been as successful because it was so loud and so crazy. Oh, yeah. It was a pirate's den. It was a pirate's den. Yeah, it was absolutely, absolutely bonkers yeah. in there. But it was everything I needed to kind of put the pressure on. Right. You know, it's that thing where performers, we need the pressure in other wor- in, in, in order to uh, – Really, kind of come into ourselves, yeah. and that was that place was it. Because it was rock star stuff. If you didn't, yeah. if you didn't have a good set there, you were not going to have a good set. Dude, there. it was like Gladiator, <laughs> uh, you know, Russell Crowe style. Like when you went, because it was you knew right away when you got up there that it was it was the first place that I felt comfortable because I had I was similar in the fact that I, it was high energy and and if you had that type of set, sure, you could use the energy. Now you you were the king of that, you know, and that's what you that's what you did. And the first time I met you was at. Dublin's okay, but what you did eventually, and then you turned it into MySpace, and you become like the first like real comedian. To a mogul, use, we can a mogul use that spot, word. <laughs> mogul works, but to use social media to build your brand is what sure. you did, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But back then, you you would get like a website that you started. Right? Yes, and it was that website. That, that's right. Yeah, and then DaneCook.com. That's what it was, and I still have it. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, but that, having that first uh, splash page or whatever they called it at that time when people were just like discovering, oh, the internet, there's more on here. Right. There's artists. There is in- interesting stuff. Um, it was that was a cool time. It really yeah. was. I felt like I was toiling in like a lab, going. Nobody knows this is going to work. This is going to be. It's true. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So it's cool. I'm glad that it, it shook out. It did for sure. I mean, because then you it, you lose MySpace and you blow up and it was like 2005 to like 2000 uh, 2005 2006 was really when you really started to pop. Like right. your, your album went. Because I remember when I was younger, growing up, like Dice was the, the the rock star comedian. Yes. He was the guy to sell at Madison Square Garden. Right, like a spectacle kind of show, yeah, an that, event. So which, did that blow your fucking mind when you were able to do that? Too? Yeah, I mean, but you know, it was such a, it was like such a slow burn or a slow rise um, that I could acclimate year to year. I knew it was happening in two thousand one, two, three. It's, yeah. I felt those, the, especially the colleges would be. You know, the the crowds were were coming in from outside of the school to you know. Hey, I saw you at this gig in New England, and we drove here. We wanted to see it again. So I felt there was something happening, yeah. and then when I could lock in the internet, and I had a, a way to have a meet and greet with people, even after I was on to the next gig, I was like, "Oh, this is it. This is yeah. this is a portal. This is the next thing." Yeah, and it's uh, that's and it's also because, especially like I said, to where. Comedians have been able to, very few have been able to do what like you and Dice knows, like Sebastian, like you guys do to, yeah. to be able to sell out. Kevin like, Hart. Kevin Hart, exactly. To be able to do that. And it's it's, it's few and far between. And so during that time, obviously, you're, you're thankful for it, too, but does it get to be too much at some point to where there's a lot of pressure that comes on? Um, I wouldn't say too much, but there's certainly a fair amount of uh, outside pressure. Whereas yeah. comedy, you know, we're conditioned to. It, we're gunslingers. We're we're a solo act. Where you know we're we're out there having to own and operate ourselves, observe and report solo. So when you finally are a um, commodity yeah. and you are part of the machine in the business of show, 
uh, it starts to get a little bit tricky because now you've got people throwing things at you that maybe isn't the best possible step for you, but they'd like to make a few you know dollars off it. Right. So traversing that area was probably the hardest part once things really catapulted. That first like year or two, um, I felt like, man, I always dreamed about this and I always hoped that this would come to fruition. Yeah. So I did revel in it, but I was also going, I don't know what to do. I, there's no handbook. I've read biographies. I've seen documentaries on people that have made it. Right. But uh, being a you know a welfare kid from Arlington, Massachusetts, Red Sox fan, by the way. I know. I, I, Me uh, as well. Uh, from Newton, with all the respect. Way, so I, I <laughs> both you. Newton, yeah. Newton Square? Yeah, both of you guys. Well, yeah. Both? Oh, my yes. gosh. Well, yeah, she's, she I'm is. the Newton South girl, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah, I should have yeah, yeah. worn my sock shirt. I knew he okay. would do this to you. Well, then I was actually more I was of a... I doing it more to you. <laughs> I was more of a Belmont guy, which really only goes... This circle yeah. kind of knows, or triangle we're in, uh, understands that uh, that reference, but... Uh, whenever I, it's funny, whenever we talk anything about, you know, Boston, I've been out here in California a lot of years, but ah, it's like everything with all the seeds were planted yeah, right there. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, cause that's funny. That's the, you going to change that shirt at some point? Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. I just, I, I'm sorry, but I just wanted that's to find okay. out. I, I, I appreciate the <laughs> gonna, yeah, I feel yeah. like the emblem is growing. Yeah. That's what's <laughs> staring you in the face. That's why. <laughs> By the end, it's like this big and it's just hovering <laughs> in the air. <laughs> well, normally I would have sat you over there, but I said, no, he's got to see it. Uh, but, <laughs> and, but it was funny you say that because of all that stuff, you, that makes sense. You Especially, you know, you get all these, you blow up, you're selling out all these shows, but you get all these movies that are getting thrown at you at that time. And yeah. that's the second time they were met. I was working for Joel Silver. Okay. And Warner Brothers. Yep. And 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 it was funny. They said, well, Dane's over there. And I was like, you guys performed together in Dublin. I was like, we had one conversation. He's like, go say hello to him. You're in the <laughs> casting thing. You were in, in there for a meeting. We had a brief conversation. And But it was, I remember it's where you, t- and that's another thing. You got to take all of these meetings to where it's like, what's the next project? How do you know what the next one is? How the director, the writing. Right. So it, well, yeah. it, all the meetings. And then, you know, even outside of, um, you know, shows where you want to meet and greet and hang with people. Uh, everybody wants a piece of you, yeah. you know, and so, and it's, and I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm one of those people that when I, when I am in show mode, like I'm going to give a hundred percent every time. That means in the meet and greet, I'm not like lackluster. I'm going to talk to you. I want to, that's, that's a lot. I mean, I remember really honestly when the, after that first two year run yeah. where I'd pretty much done, uh, everything that I was hoping that I would do. I remember sitting uh, with a friend of mine and saying, "Like I have nothing left in the tank. I have you know, I'm literally depleted, yeah. and I need to like reboot." And I also, just as a as a person that loves reinvention, I was kind of like, "Okay, I don't want to I don't want to continue to be that kind of comedian. I'd like to learn something new, or even do films, or just I need another." Um, outlet, yeah, you know. So I, I was fortunate, and I've been fortunate. This is twenty nine years, almost thirty years. So the fact I still get to do stuff like American Exit or the Tell it Like It Is tour, yeah, it's been a, an embarrassment of riches. Yeah, let's go. how do you reboot though? By the way, you said you rebooted. How do you do that? Rebooting for me was well, first of all, just quite simply in comedy. It's you know when you when you know when you have like a new bit, when you have a new notion, and it's exciting, and you're like, I wonder if that works. I wonder if my my story resonates. So when you are cultivating new comedy, or at least for me, I feel like that's uh, my nutrition. That's yeah. a fresh start for me right there. So very simply, it started in stand up, but then also it was like learning how to have a life. Yeah. Away from stand up, you know, learning, uh, learning that I didn't have to be in business mode 24 seven, which I was from like 1998 when it really got started cooking for me. No name pun intended. Uh, <laughs> all the way up until it was just yeah. it was a lot. It was a lot. And I'm I'm uh, I'm so grateful for it. But I still look back and go, Ooh, that yeah. was that was exhausting. That first wave. And I'm, I'll jump back into that a little bit. But I do want to talk about the reason you're here today is because American Exit, um, this movie, it's a dramatic role. Mm-hmm. And the, it's it's a very it's it's a courageous role, too, because I didn't know because I heard about it. And I was like, that, because I know you're from the comedies and from from stand up. And I was like, let's see. I know you did. The, and you did the movie with with Kevin Costner. But that was sure. that was a, a bit ago. I, so I was like, well, what's this role? And it's a it's a, it's a pretty challenging role, man. I mean, you got to oh yeah, terminally ill. You got to you got to. I'm, I'm a father. A I'm with a, your dad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, excuse me, relationship with your son, and and uh, and you, and it's a kind of a heist thing too. So why why did you decide this was the one that you wanted to do? Okay, so it it actually I think it decided that I was supposed to be in it because the directors called me a week before 
production started. Get out of here. Really? There was another actor who was already hired and in the job. And these directors who I knew, uh, Ingo Volkheimer and, and uh, Tim Miller, they came to me and they said, uh, we lost our guy, but we've been trying to get you for this even before. Um, but my agents at the time never told me really about oh. it. They they didn't think maybe at that time I'd be interested in this kind of gritty. So long story mm-hmm. short, I meet with them. I read the script, and I'm like, I have to do this because, A, I'm afraid of it because yeah. there was so much stuff in there that I'm like, how do I do this? How do I play termini- terminally ill? How do I, you know, the approach of, like, I'm not a dad yet. What is what is that? I was in great shape. You know, I want to put on 30 pounds and get kind of a, a dad bod. And So I knew that it was going to be a full-on commitment. Um, I was like, I have three weeks, basically, to get out of shape yeah. and uh, – and make this role resonate. Um, but what I found was through that experience, um, I've just I've grown even more from it. Uh, and working with Levi Miller, who's my son in that it, my kid, co-star. My daughter loves Pan. So uh, yeah. So she and you know he got that on an audition. He just got that. He'd never done a film. He was one of three thousand kids. Is that that's the first one he ever did? That's, that's how the first got, one he wow. did. He's yeah. good, man. He, no, he's yeah. and he's like a pro. He's not. His mom is just a mom. She's not a momager. He there's no weird thing. Sometimes like kid actors are whatever. a little funky. Yeah. No, he's he's like a good person, real guy, and um, very gifted. Yeah, he was. I mean, well, you got to believe it, and I believed it with you too. So, that, and that's when you because again, you you get thrown into that that movie that quick. You got to put on the put on the weight, then you got to meet him. And a lot of these times, when you're talking to actors, like you got to have that chemistry. Otherwise, especially with this story, or you don't buy it. Mm-hmm. So, how like what's the process with you two to where you go out, you meet him, go have, like, yeah. have a cup of coffee, like, or you yeah. do anyway? Oh, we all yeah. you know hung, but because we had a short amount of time, it was like um, something that was really. Uh, critical was you know i sat with him i think he was 13 when we were making it and you know kids especially young people they just respond to the truth they re- they they know it they have like some kind of reaction to when there's bs happening right. around them so i was immediately assertive and honest with him about why i was wanting to be a part of this and and i said to him a week before we started i said this is you and me it's not my movie it's our movie um, and we need to trust each other. And I said, and I'm going to be there for you, and I'm going to protect whatever choices you feel you need to make in scenes. And will you do the same for me? So I made him an equal yeah. immediately. And he got it. He was locked into that. We we spent pretty much every day before scenes um, breaking it down and going over it, or we'd be texting or calling. I mean, the kid just was a phenom. Yeah. And he's, he's awesome in it. And he brought a great performance, I believe, out of me. I believe so, too. I thought the movie was excellent, and I thought you were so incredible in it. I wonder, because I was so impressed by you, when you watch this back, do you feel proud of yourself? Do you look at it and you say, I really nailed this? Or do you kind of just think, all right, this is just another thing that I've done on to the next? Well, it's 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 definitely not that. I mean, I do love getting on to the next thing, and I'm always loving, um, again, kind of the reinvention of uh, an act, per yeah. se. Um, but... Uh, for me, I feel like it's the best thing that I've ever done on film uh, in terms of drama. You know, people might say, well, the comedy's different. Yeah, it is. It's a different lane. It's it's uh, it's something that I can tap into, you know, pretty quickly and easily. Right. But doing something like this that you have to really have, um, you know, really have uh, patience and um, you really have to rely on your homework and, and what you put into creating a pers- a life. Um, and I did, I put a lot, you know, I pulled from my dad, you know, I grew up with a dad who drank and, um, there was dark times in our house and a lot of my father is in there. So when I see it, I see moments where I'm like, wow, that's, yeah. that was, that was my pop, very loving, but had his own issues. And sometimes, Demons, yeah. yeah, those, yeah. But is there, a, is there, a, so is that one of the reasons that maybe you think you took the role also? Because like you said, you can, you, comedy, you've been doing it for so long, you can tap into it. This is a challenge, obviously, but it's also one of the, it's, I bet you it felt therapeutic doing it. Yeah, too. it felt therapeutic. It, and also the, just the yin and yang for me about when I'm doing something um, way away from comedy, now when I come back to comedy, I'm really fresh. Right. And I'm really even more like uh, effervescent about getting to whatever that is. So if I can, in my career, can, you know, in my, if I'm fortunate enough to continue to, um, you know, be able to transition back and forth, it helps 
each other. Yeah. You know, because then I'm on a set and I'm playing something like American Gods or something where it's it's gritty and and uh, and uh, and maybe a character that's you know vulnerable or tough and or whatever it is. I feel like what I bring to that set and to that role is um, is generated by the just general enthusiasm I have for um, risk yeah. in performance, well, if it, that makes any it sense. It does make a lot of sense. And I think the other thing, too, is that it's we have a buddy on, on this show who he's, he's going – he hasn't done stand-up in like 10 years. And he's going back into – we're going to Houston this week. And he's, in, he's he takes a, ten year breaks in between a, sets. He, well, this is funny. Uh, this is funny. You said because in between sets, he actually does. Uh, he did. He did one at my. He did one of my fortieth. He did a roast for me, and he got back up and he crushed it. And he's just one of those guys. We all know him. He's just that naturally walks in a room, says one thing, and everyone's on the floor. Sure. But he's just got. It's, it's the self confidence thing, right? And I know he's going to crush because you just. It's the guy you want to choke out because he should be doing. He should be selling out. Yeah. Why is it? Why do you dip out for ten years? Because it's the confidence, dude. So because the thing that you, the thing that you were talking about, too. It's not just family though. He's always been like that it's it's one of those he's got to go in there and it's a matter of because i do i'm very similar to where you where you're talking about where you just got to go 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 sometimes i just take a fucking break sure he's not that way but i got him back on stage he's going up on on houston but he's in a spot right now it's a little darker and i said to Mm. my wife i said he's gonna crush because it's not just because comedians are miserable it's because when you get to that spot it's for some reason it's like the 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 power starts to come through. Yes. Oh yeah. When I, my best sets ever have been when I feel encumbered. Right. And when life is putting you know major boot on neck moments. Yeah. Uh, I've I've always for me it feels like and, and it, maybe not to get too like heady about it, but maybe it's because yeah when you're feeling uh, um, you know uh, a, a depression yeah. or a funk or whatever is the hardship. Um, maybe just performing that adrenaline and that dopamine or yeah. whatever it is. I just know that for me, a, a little. I like a little bit of stress in performance. I, 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 I've always said I love getting to the club or the show, and I love that sometimes the manager will come out and say, so-and-so didn't show up. You're, can you go up right now? To me, I don't want to wait. I don't like the sitting and waiting. I'd rather walk in and be a the, go. go right, go right up, yeah. go right up now. That's that's my sweet spot. Yeah, I feel like you. I mean, we don't have to get into specifics, but you're somebody who's been through a ton of trauma, and I am curious, how do you then, if you if you think that that drives you, just not say fuck it some nights. You just want to be un, in your bed under the blankets, and you don't want to perform for people because stuff's going on, and you just don't want to make people laugh right now. I don't think I've ever had that. Wow, it's the drug. I, I've had the trauma and I've had the bed, you know, the sheet wrapped around me like I'm in a, you know, uh, sarcophagus or something. And but I've uh, I've never not wanted to be on stage. Um, and yeah, it, yeah. I, I, no matter what is going on, no it, matter. What, I, I'll, I'll share this. I'm not to make it too, too serious. But the night my dad passed away, um, I had work. I was under contract to do. Good luck, Chuck. And I had to leave my dad in Boston, fly back to L.A. for one night, and then go to Vancouver. And then I was going to go back to see my my dad. But my dad passed away mm. after I'd left, which we kind of thought that might happen. So we had you know our moment. Um, I just went right to the comedy club. I got on stage maybe two hours after I learned that, and uh, had a great set, and you know dedicated it to my yeah. my pops when it was over. But that's that uh, that crossroads of like. Uh, turmoil and artistry. I, I I like that crossroad. I get it because and it's the same thing. My my brother passed away this past uh, August. Oh, sorry. Um. Thank you. And um. It immediately. I I called in and I was like, I want to. I want to call my boss. I was like, I want to get on air. I want to talk. He's like, take it easy. I was like, <laughs> don't don't do anything because you want to. You want that release. You want to be able to. Sure. It's one of those things because as far as going back and to, to, to you know make it a little less serious. To the, 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 <laughs> Let's the, see how he does this. I know. Well, I'll show you. <laughs> He's <laughs> great with transitions. We'll see. We'll see. You know what you I want to be great ask if yeah. we had this serious interview, but we were in bumper cars and every once in a while we would just ram into each other. That <laughs> right. was that would work. Right. Um, well, Cody would love that. It, and filming that. They yeah. would go nuts with that. But you know, I was going to ask him the Jay Washington <laughs> question that I asked the other day. Okay. If anyone would know, it'd be him. Okay. Yeah. Don't keep secrets from me. But What's I going on here? He's looking for a specific answer, though. <laughs> I'm going to so ask. You give oh, him really? Yeah. It'll be, but <laughs> he's we'll setting see. me up for no, the not, kill. No, I'm not setting you up. But, uh, but so <laughs> he, here, here's here's the question. So if, let's say it's Brett or my friend Brett that I was talking about took the break. Let's say someone had taken a, a break from stand-up for a long time. Okay. 
And, and I know guys that have done that. Of course, myself, one of those people. So uh, let's say that when you, as you're going to other clubs and you're seeing this, you see someone who's doing, a friend of yours, who's doing a, a joke. Never seen you do stand-up, by the way. This person, you've met them afterwards. Okay, you is this them. a riddle? Wait, this is not a riddle yet. You, but keep on paying attention. Keep on paying attention. You'll yeah. get it. Okay. You'll Twist get it. Wait, am I the guy seeing you're somebody? Not, you're not. You're not. You're not in this equation Who what, am I? whatsoever. You're, am I me? You you right now are the judge. <laughs> you're Judge Cook. You're Judge Cook. Uh, and so anyway, so so the guy's been. T- I've, I'm taking a break for a long time. I see a friend of mine who's doing a joke now, and I just met this person. He's okay. never seen me do stand up, and he's doing a bit and hits a couple of my lines that I used to do every day. Right. And no, he's not, he's not a stolen bit at all. Right. If I decided to come back to stand up tomorrow, do I tell my friend, hey, listen, I'm going to start doing that joke again? Or is it his now? Where I'm at today in my career, yeah. and we could talk about how I would have reacted to that as yeah. well 10, 20 years ago. Today, I just move on. Just do a different joke. Oh, it right. happens to me a That's lot. I you know, I, I, I've been, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. There's guys that I know um, emulate. What I did the same way I emulated what I saw Steve Martin and guys that I love do. And I don't think that's uh, thievery. I think that it just as artists, right. you know, you kind of learn from yeah. other people that a little homage too. That, it's it's all of that. Yeah. Um, and and I'll hear it once in a while. I've had guys even you know opening acts of mine. You know that I could say because they're friends. Hey, we have a. I just Move on. I go. You know what? I said it. It's been out there. I. Maybe I need that real estate in my mind to move on to the next uh, funny idea. So right. it's it's okay. And it still can irk you, but I don't think it really makes – it doesn't really help to – Try to get all political over yeah, a yeah, piece yeah. of material. Yeah, yeah, I think it was more. That was more of a. Of a was just, that the right answer to that? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Why it doesn't matter is he's not coming back. So I, it, it's all. I don't know. We'll see what the New York show holds, but uh, okay. yeah, maybe not. But that actually goes back to where. Where's the New York show? Uh, we well, we're performing. We do a, a movie trivia show here. It's like WWE meets uh, trivia. Okay, and we we've been Schmodown. Yeah, we've been selling out shows, and we're going to we're going nice. to New York to do it. We just did a, we did a thousand seat theater in Chicago, the a- Athenaeum. Did you have you done that one yet? I don't know Athenaeum and. And we're going so we're going to um, we're going to New York in Manhattan somewhere. I forget the name of the theater, but Mark Ellis, who, who you know as well, too, from Comedy Store guy. Sure. Uh, he's uh, he's doing a show the night before, and we've we've talked about it. But I, I probably I, I'm probably bullshitting. I probably won't okay. get back in there. But you started going because the thing is, you were always the Laugh Factory. That was like that was your that was your home base yeah, for a that long was like, time. Yeah, that was where I I really kind of. Uh, you know, it was the first place that I performed in L.A. that I I felt like I was um, I would go there with a real intention of uh, how can I expand well, my I remember, yeah. abilities. Um, so then that bled into Dublin's and stuff, and of course the Comedy Store and the Improv. But but the Laugh Factory was the first right. place that I performed that I felt like this is kind of a home for me. Yeah, you see that was the thing because I was my my home was the Comedy Store from like two thousand and one until like two thousand six. You, right, because you you weren't coming around the comic store until like around that time. That's that, right. That right. Yeah, because I I wasn't. You, but you know, I have a quick funny story. Is that um, Paulie called me? Paulie Shore called me. And, you know, his mom, yeah. the the legendary Mitzi Shore, uh, Yoda. Um, absolutely. And I I'd been so kind of busy at that point in my life that I wasn't. Uh, I'd never met her. And Paulie called me and was like, "My mom's going to do something she has only done a couple times. She's going to pass you." So I got a phone call. I, I was so proud. I was so excited. I was like, wow, that's, that's tell, you know, please tell her thank you and yeah. I love her and she's the best. And so anytime I get to perform on that stage, it's, uh, it's just awesome. That place is, and, and what a great resurgence it's had. It really has, you know? man. Yeah, they, they've, they've taken it because it was like the. And the factory. I mean, Laugh Factory, same thing. Yeah. They all have their, you know, ebbs and flows, but uh, both clubs, and, and by the way, even in the improv, I feel like all three clubs right now are really on a on a good pulse. Yeah, it's true. Stand up comedy just had a, a, a big boom over the last like five, 10 years because it, it was. It was my, not, you know why I feel, my feeling on that yeah, is. Please. I think that the reason we're seeing, and, and even the shows that I'm doing and my friends are, why are all these comics, there's so many more comics, how are we all packing in these you know huge houses, thousands of people? There's less comedy movies, because it's all about blockbusters. Mm-hmm. So now you've got superhero, superhero, superhero. People still want that outlet to laugh. So more business for us in comedy. It's like, keep these superhero movies going, because that's helping every comic right. I know right. to cultivate a fan base of people that are... Bored in the middle of somewhere, who go? 
man, we, yeah. there's no other options here. It's true, and also because even because H, I remember like because when you got your show, your 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 special on HBO, it's, it was like, it's a huge big thing because there weren't so many specials that were hitting. Now with Netflix and you have all, it's they're sh- not really special anymore. That's they're the just, problem. Yeah, they're just it's just like the movies. There's tons of movies. Yeah, there's tons of specials that come out. It, it's it's so amazing. It kind of what's happening now uh, reminds me of when Comedy Central first really started to to pop, and then suddenly it was like oversaturated. Mm-hmm. There was a period in the '90s where. Everybody thought they could do it, and like, and so now I'm seeing a bit of that same thing. I I like when comedians are, I like when they're selective, and I like when they um, uh, ch- kind of change their positioning. Don't you know? I wouldn't keep it all at HBO if if over the years I you know had built up you know more sets that they said we want this. I would say, well, maybe this one belongs here, or maybe this one's content is better suited for. This or that. I think it's smart for comics to be aware that they don't want to just be the flotsam and jetsam in a, a one particular right. streaming service, even though that's an amazing uh, opportunity. As it a it performer. is, and I think it's also another reason why people have more access to comedians than maybe whether it's social yes. media also, but because of the streaming, and then they're sitting. Oh, I just saw that guy on Netflix. I'm gonna he's oh, over yeah. at the comedy store. I'm gonna go check him out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, it's definitely like just. Uh, the whole idea of getting people back into the you know brick and mortar of it all in a club it it, it helps to have podcasting it help it's it's really cool to be able to do this after coming up the way I did because I always called comedians entrepreneurial and people thought I was a little flaky or something they'd be like no you guys sling a few jokes and you're dark souls and you know <laughs> you're vampires and you hang upside down at night after you set <laughs> right. I was like you don't get it it's like comics that I know are are uh, you know, we're working, we're toiling and thinking constantly about ideas and possibilities. So the fact that we all have outlets now like this, yeah. um, you know, to to get to know people again, it's the meet and, it's the new version of the meet and greet. You get to hear us here, and something jives, and next thing you know, you come out and see my show. Even though you're like, eh, I've never really wanted to see a Dane Cook show live. And then suddenly yeah. you're like, that conversation changed my perspective. Well, speaking of which, you have a big show coming up in Hawaii, uh, July 20th. Yeah, and yes. So tell me a little bit about that, because I know you're, you're really excited about it, obviously. Yeah. And, and a lot of these people here, we have a lot of Hawaiian uh, fans, so where can I see it? Well, first of all, mahalo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good start. <laughs> yeah, good start. <laughs> I speak a little pigeon uh, from time to time. Uh, the Hawaii show in Honolulu, uh, July 20th. Um, man, I've performed down there several times, but I just I love that part of the world. Yeah. I you know if I can get away, if I'm you know fortunate enough to take a vacation, then I want to go to Hawaii. So the the fact that I can go down and, and do shows down there is uh, is really cool. Yeah, I'm going in August. I yeah. cannot wait. It's part of the Tell It Like It Is tour, which yeah. is kind of on a little break, but I put a couple of dates in the summer, and then in the fall, it's uh, Radio City Music Hall for the first Damn. time. So wow! wow. So yeah. when, when is that? Yeah, oh, uh, that's a great question. Not locked in October. Oh, okay. No, October. it's locked. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's October. It might be September or October fifteenth. That's but cool. Man. Either way, it's like that's crazy. That's a, so. That's the first time you're doing it. First time that's there. Cool. I've now. I can say after that that I've played every venue yeah. in New York City. That I, you know, the Beacon, incredible. Yeah, the Madison Garden. Square Garden Theater, Garden. Madison Square Garden. Oh. By the way, the cellar, uh, just yeah. you know, I love it. Love yeah. that spot, and wouldn't be here today without having my turnstile go through the comedy cellar, right? And how they, you know, treated me and 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 helped me to, you know, figure like maybe I can take this thing on the on the road a little further west. Yeah. But Radio City, I would always go past it and be like, ah, oh, someday. Yeah, you when did. the time is right. Dude, so here we go. Awesome. Wow. That's really Watch cool. me bomb now. No, you won't. <laughs> Watch you, me go and just tank. Yeah. Do you have any other first times you're really looking forward to? Because I look at your career and I just think he has done it all. Is there anything else oh, on your list? He, uh, so much. Yeah. I really? Mean, man, I wish that I – sometimes I, I – uh, it's almost like I wish I could just uh, – be like happy with the repertoire and just be able to just kick back. But uh, I'm constantly on a search for um, new ways to tell stories. Uh, it's the same as I felt when I started. Uh, the first time I stepped on stage and whatever that feeling you get from yeah. being a comedian or saying I'm, I've done comedy, it has not like lessened at all. Like I said, when, I, when I'm having some, an issue in my life, I still – love getting on stage and making people feel good and i feel like i need that as well so 
uh, there are a lot of things that I want to do, and I've kind of parlayed, you know, this last couple of years, being more selective, waiting for a role like American Exit. Yep. Um, I'm directing. I'm, I wrote and directed a short with a good friend of mine, and we just got into, actually this week, we got into Rhode Island That's great. In, International Film Festival. Yes. We did Santa Barbara. What's that about? Uh, it's called, actually, it's funny, it's the third, I did American Gods, and mm-hmm. then this uh, short, uh, the film that is out is American Exit, Exit and then the short is actually called American Typecast. Okay. You're an American boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, a friend of mine came to me and said he'd been living in L.A. trying to make it, he's a Middle Eastern actor, but from California, yeah. and just telling me funny stories about the typecasting that takes place when you're a Middle Eastern actor. And he's like, dude, I blew up a helicopter. It's not a Met, Met, is it? And CSI. No, oh, no. Okay. My friend, uh, Monib Abhad. Okay. And he uh, he was just, you know, sharing all these funny, funny stories. And I've heard from all these other guys, yeah. you know, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, the Maz Jabranis and everybody like, oh, I got to go in on the bad guy, right. a bad person. The terrorist on 24. something bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you think I'm nice for a minute, but I'm actually bad. Right. I'm even worse. Uh, so uh, my friend, uh, we call him Mo. Mo and I talked about a short idea uh, based on a true story of his um, auditioning process. So Seth Green's in it. Oh, cool. uh, we got great people and uh, an amazing cinematographer, Ivan Rodriguez. It looks like we spent way more than we did. Um, so it's nice to have people seeing it. But for me to be like, okay, that I'm, I'm in it for a, a moment, but... It wasn't about me, and certainly not a story about me. It's yeah. not something I could tell. Uh, I couldn't share it in my stand-up. So now I'm getting to um, help other artists develop their ideas and cultivate, uh, which is more of what I want to do moving yeah, forward. Yeah, see, that's fun, though, too, because when you have all that experience of what you've been able to do, and, and when you're younger, obviously, it's it's about accomplish the goal, accomplish the goal, get it, and then later on, it's it's help, help people, but still accomplish your own goals, obviously. Sure. And inside of this movie here, because it's a dramatic role, is this something more, because it seems, even from looking at your social media, how excited, and it's, you can say, well, of course you're promoting it, but you can tell the way you're promoting it. You're very excited about it. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're thrilled about it. Is I don't it, talk about it unless it's organically, yeah. You're right. right. But the dramas, is that where you want, you, as far as acting, you want to stick with that? Um, I think that if, if you were to say, like, okay, what specifically performance-wise, it's like, I love movies like... Um, like Pulp Fiction. Yeah. I, I would like to be able to find a role. You know, American Exit, you watch it and you can see the 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 bit of uh, the, the scary edge that I can put into a, a character, find the dark corners. But I'd love to find something in that, you know, I'm a bad guy, but the humor yeah. can still play. I know that I can play up that kind of um, demented charm. Because I've done it in my stand-up, you know, for so many years. Right. So if I could, if if you're listening, <laughs> if you're a young screenwriter, well, get on Final you, Draft and. Who are you talking to? Who is the number one director you want to work with, or, or number one person? Oh out man, there? there's so many people. Honestly, it's yeah. like, and I'm and some I'm I'm friends with, and uh, you know, I've got I've got buddies that have produced some of the biggest blockbusters in Hollywood. So there is like, I don't want to name a name because then other people would be like, right. well, why didn't you say me? Um, but there's a lot, and but but I'm also like, I, I'm more zen in my life. And after say like 2008 or nine, when my life was kind of catapulted, you know, losing my parents, I lost both my parents to cancer, and this stuff with my my brother, which turned into like you know putting him in jail, and just this unbelievable um, tidal wave. And when I came off of that and I did the work and I figured out how to love myself and, you know, forgive and all the things that I needed to do, it just changed. I became so much more introspective and Zen. I don't push the way I used to where I'd call my agents when I first got, why I need to get in there and I want to do it's like, no, if it's something's meant to come to me, then people will maybe see this and know I'm a pro. I come to work. And uh, I just want to make uh, great art with other people that are, you know, putting their hard work into it. It's real simple, but I wait for those. Yeah. I wait yeah. for those opportunities. Sometimes it's tough because I wake up every day like I want to. I'm ready to go. You know, so I always have stand up to 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 you know help me with when I'm feeling that that uh, that uh, you know pent up need. Um, and yet somehow I still can go Zen and go, I know that things are going to come when it's time. Crazy how that works. It, it, but, you know, as far as American Exit, another thing I didn't bring up here is that it's based on a true story. Yes. That's See, that's the thing that I, I had no idea. I had no yeah. idea that was based on a true story. And because of, did you, so how much, how much of it is, is true? And did yeah. you, did you, that was my first question to the directors. Yeah. I said, whenever you hear that, you know, you, you, you really want to understand, like, is this just uh, the, you right. know, the ancillary? A is guy took his framework? kid. 
The <laughs> no, it was really about a, you know, yeah. pretty much all, I don't want to give too much away, but pretty much all the beats that set up, like, why they're on the run. You know, it's a crime thriller, ultimately, but why they're on the run and who these two characters are, are, you know, from our directors are, uh, are very specific to moments in their life. Right. Well, Again, yeah. no spoilers, but the ending blew my mind. I, when Thanos I, comes in? Yeah, <laughs> and then snapped. That's it. That was it's crazy. Yeah. But it really did. Is that have truth to it as well? Um, yes. Really? Wow. Yeah. Again, wow. I, this is kind of fun because I feel like I feel like it. I can't. Yeah. Uh, I this do is f- your Marvel. <laughs> this is it. Okay, but we have mentioned superhero movies a couple of times. And yes, I and I've been curious. a superhero. Yes. Well, I do. Before we get into that, I know where you're going. Before okay. where you're going, I do. Want I to know show where you're going. I want to show a clue. Look what's happening. I know. See, it's, I, I know what synergy. you're doing. What you doing. Who knows what he's doing? That's okay. the truth. Okay. That's the truth. Let's. We're going to show a clip. Back, you're going to be wearing a different shirt. Okay. Let's roll the clip. That is definitely false. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's a clip from American Exit. I remember that snake. It was here when my dad took me on a road trip. He wanted to show me a house he was going to buy. He was leaving us, and he only told me. And he said it was our secret, and that I couldn't tell her. He said he'd tell her when he was ready, because he met someone else. I watched my father pretend for a month pretend to care about my mother, pretend that we were normal, and that that's the way it was always going to be. Just pretended. I started to hate him. I hated him more than anybody in my whole life. Then he told her, we're getting a divorce, and he left us on the same day. My mom didn't even know what hit her. I remember going to bed, and as I was falling asleep, I could hear my mother in the living room crying. (laughs) But here we are. All right, we are back. And once again, guys, American Exit. You can the blue. It's Blu-ray. It's everything today. Everything is today. Uh, iTunes on demand. Blu-ray, uh, DVD. So check it out. American. I'm sure Exit. it's on pirate uh, sites. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't say don't, that. Don't, don't do it there. <laughs> Go and check it out everywhere that you can legally watch it. And we have the star of that movie, Dane Cook, here talking about American Exit. Um, I got to ask you one thing. It's a controversial thing, and I know. I gotta ask. Him. Oh boy! I you got, know what? I, gotta ask. I can tell by your tone; it's not, not controversial. I, it is. He's not hiding it. it, it, it actually, I don't think it, it is. It actually really is. Because usually, when somebody sets you up for controversial, it's like something really I, simple set up, and you're like, "Oh, this is good." No, I promise you, this is a controversial. Here, controversial here we topic. go. Um, okay, Game of Thrones fan. Yeah, that, okay, I'll yes. tell you why it is game. Do you, do you not? You're a Twitter guy. You don't see what the fuck these people are doing on Twitter. About <laughs> I, this episode? I read the next day after yeah, and, and I watch. You didn't watch. see how people are losing their minds over this episode. I, I do. I saw. I understand. I, we can't talk too much about it because right No, we spo- they, they might they, come they, and hit we, us. We, we did a lot of spoilers yesterday. We don't have to go too much. But did you like? Did you like the episode? I did. Okay. Oh, but not you didn't love it. I did, but okay. I I felt like there was um, character development uh, issues that ah, I had. That and, and, be... and my biggest gripe is that you know once they passed the books, yeah, then it wasn't the organic origin completion of these characters. So we're seeing we're seeing their version, the writers, and they're very gifted. But I won't wish that we were seeing what the books would have entailed. Did you read all of them? No, you didn't. But okay, see that—that that was the. But thing my buddies me. who are like book geeks yeah, and have yeah. read them all and like whatever side books, it's like they would tell me, okay, this that's similar. They right. changed this a little bit, but the the thread of certain characters, I I just wish that it was already in a in a novel. So that they was could, then the, they could just adapted. adapt it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, see, I'm I'm loving it. I like what we've gotten so far because I was getting to a place with Game of Thrones a while back that everything was so miserable that I was like, okay, I get it. Everyone's going to die now. But then I I like sometimes when it's fan service. I think that's a it's an ugly word sometimes. It shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. And I know another thing you're a big fan of. I am too. And it's, and it's the last time we met before today was Star Wars. Yes. So Benioff and Weiss, you know, who are doing Game of Thrones, it was announced today, and we kind of knew this was happening that their next three movies are going to be the Star Wars movies. Yep. Um, think you, now, 
it's going to, I'm pretty convinced it's going to take place thousands of years before you're going to see the formation of the mm. Jedi and the Sith. And it's going to be, cause that's kind of where these guys do good work here too. But is that something that you'd want to see? And second of all, what do you think about the current state of Star Wars? Yeah, I think that, uh, I think having JJ back is great. Yeah. I think that's going to be a real boost for, you know, what, what diehard fans look at when they see the new, new ones, you know, just from talking to so many of my, you know, fellow geek uh, uh, you know, buddies in the Star Wars universe is like, there's flex of what we know from the originals, but not really something that we feel is as poignant in, as the first ones right. felt for the original us. Original trilogy, sure, sure. You know, and also, you know, maybe back then we're we're kids and it's dynamic and it's something you've never seen before. I know all that adds up, but still, story is story, and I feel like some of it was kind of like retreads. Yeah. Of similar themes. Oh, we've been in this kind of desert. We've been on this kind of, oh, this ice uh, star killer base is right. Hoth. Right. It just felt like uh, too much of a parallel. Um, and I hope that they just completely just take their own version of this. I'd rather have an original idea in story, not Skywalker, not tied into any of that. So you're cool, so so if it is thousands of years before, I mean, that's a new, new way to open it up. Yeah. So, I mean, who, who knows, as, as long as they can make brand new characters, brand new Sith Lords, whoever it might be, you're, you're on board with it. With oh, yeah, 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 I would rather, I, would, I absolutely feel like it, it would be smarter for them to take a break from the Skywalker of it all, and that, that I mean, that story's done, Right. really. It's, uh, it you know, they're, they're, I don't know what more they can even do with it. I'm interested to see the next yeah, one. Do you, like the, do you like that the Emperor's coming back? I mean, is he? Is it? I, I so. know we're hearing him laugh in yeah. the trailer, he, he but out. I was at Star Wars Celebration. He walked out and he's like, "Roll it again." Oh. Why, why do you bring? Why do you bring him out? That was, by the way, that was good. Thank he's you. unbelievable <laughs> at impressions, especially of farts. We found out farts. Right? I'm really good yep. at. But let's not do that. I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> okay. No, it's all right. Not today. Uh, when you leave, though. as soon as you as soon as you walk out the door, it's going to be like a fireworks July Fourth. <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, but but we have. Uh, but he's coming back, and I think I think it could be exciting because you said JJ. The fact that JJ's coming back, I wasn't a big Last Jedi. Fan myself um the fact that jj is coming back here i think that we're going to have a brand new uh, appreciation for this new trilogy okay yeah. good i mean i'm i'm, I'm hopeful yeah. i you know i, I love them so yeah. it's like if they can do something that it's the game of Thrones things it yeah. just throw us something that's like i've never seen that in this kind of story before right. and i think that people are yearning for that in in these particular kinds of stories it's the truth yeah. Um, when and, you're such a super fan of this kind of content and you're in the position you are, do you ever try to say, like, okay, even if I can get on Mandalorian for one day or if I can try to get on one of their streaming shows or a movie, I'm going to pitch myself because I'm Dan Cook. It's I know people that have produced them and I, I'm, yeah. I'm buddies with them, but yeah. I don't – that's just not – how I do it, you know. I they 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 know me. I'm friends with them. They know my ability, and right. they certainly know my work ethic. Um, I have found in life, anytime you lean into something that outside of love, that's a whole different thing. But anytime you try to lean into something, it tends to push you in on one side or the other. Right. And I've just found this ability to um, be be present. Yeah. Be really present, and it, and I believe that I would love to do those things. But I'm okay if I don't. Right. But if I do, I'll kick ass with it. But I'll it give okay, it everything I got. But isn't it okay Love to that. let people know? Because, like, for example, like Bill Burr is going to be in. Uh, in oh yeah, yeah, in I Mandalorian. Heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 in Mandalorian, which I yeah, thought. And was, he hated Star Wars. That's what I'm saying. And he's in it. <laughs> yeah. So and so the but but because, I love see I love seeing comics right do things that are. Not traditional, um, you know. When I for me coming up, Robin Williams could be yeah. in a you know a drama. Jim Carrey, Eternal Sunshine. Or, yep. There's so many comics that played roles that uh, you know. Michael Keaton was a comedian. He yeah. was Michael Douglas, That's a right. comedian. That's right. Um, Comedy and, star regular. And so I, I for me, I like seeing um, the departure moments in, in in any comic, any guy or girl that's out there that is primarily known as. Um, you know, a joke slinger. I love seeing somebody in losing them in a role going, right. wow, that is them. Yeah. I know them yeah. and I forgot it was them. Well, that's kind of my point is the fact that I mean, because I, I, I completely understand. I think that you're probably, I mean, it seems like it's made you healthier to go to the Zen kind of attitude that you've been doing lately. But, but it's also, I think, okay to let people know, hey, 
let them know I'm a big Star Wars fan because if Favreau's producing. Have you worked with Favreau before? I mean, I've for, met him. For, okay, I met, yeah. because because I I feel like because you have those new Disney Plus shows that are coming out, whether it's The Mandalorian yeah, or uh, Marvel stuff, or Marvel or... stuff, the Cassian Andor. But I think that this is also by doing like something like American Exit, it's a different way now for you to kind of get in the door of this thing as opposed to saying like, well, there's you know Dame from selling out Radio City, what right? Call it? But now it's check this out. Yeah, and it's also like in, you know I can only. Talk about kind of how my career happened. It's like when you hit that highest high point, the upper, upper, you know, the top spot. And I've talked about this with Steve Martin. I've talked about this with uh, Andrew Dice Clay. It's like, okay, that crest breaks. And then, of course, um, people want to write and say, like, they're done. That's that they had their moment. We all know that that's hullabaloo. That's like it's crazy. No, they're gonna reinvent, rebuild, and then the story is they're back. People love comebacks. Yeah, oh, it's right. it's yeah. it's the American way. Look at John Travolta. You mentioned Pulp Fiction before. Everybody, yeah. literally, yeah. Will Smith. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, and of course, me. So once that pressure was off, <laughs> even though there was so much good that came out of it, I was kind of like. Uh, okay, I, I put a nest egg aside. I'm okay financially. Comedy will always pay the rent. Now I can say no to all that stuff that I think is, eh, yeah, you know, half half baked, and I can be patient. Sometimes excruciatingly patient and wait for things that I I really am want to revel in right. and enjoy. So, yeah, it, hopefully this will parlay into whatever that is. But I'm I'm not uh, pushing it. Yeah, I'll I'll let it you know come to me so to speak. Yeah, I remember I had a, I, and I can't, forgive me, I don't remember which interview it was, but I remember you talking about burnt, during that time that, and it's also, and this happened to Dice, happened to everybody, when you blow up there too, there's, when you walk into the comedy clubs, you feel like every comedian is looking at you, maybe not in the best way too, whether it's a jealousy thing, maybe it's a, and I remember at one point it felt that, you know, whether not, not everybody was on your side, but now it seems like it's shifted. It seems like you've. Oh yeah, yeah. I and and I would I was guilty. I did the same thing to people. I can't be a hypocrite. I had thoughts of being like, I'm tired of seeing this person yeah. and and kind of prejudging. But it's it's funny. This is like where I feel like the old bull, and I'm like, man, I, I I've been around for a minute. I'm not uh, the 19 year old kid anymore from Boston. But the goodwill. And the amount of people that have come to me, um, whether you know, in a, comedians in clubs or writing me and saying, hey, man, I'm one of those people. I jumped on you, too. And then they give me their reasons why. And I'm completely understanding. I, I can actually go like, oh, I empathize with that. I know what it felt like to have nothing and be kind of jealous. Or I knew what it felt like to feel like... Uh, Man, uh, my little crumb turned into nothing, and then this person who's only been doing it a minute yeah. suddenly has the golden horseshoe up their ass. We, because you start to understand, there's no rhyme or reason with the whole thing. It's really just hard work, persistence. Yeah, and when the universe wants to take a little it. bit of luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I I subscribe to the idea that you know if you work harder and longer and and also cultivate something that is in a niche. I think you greater your chances of making a landing pad that you you know right. you can you can hit, um, but all that stuff, all that the the highest wave and uh, and the mentorship that I got from a lot of people, and now how I can mentor you know young not just comedians. I'm friends with all kinds of artists, sure. but uh, because of the mistakes that I made or the things that just happened to me that I wasn't uh, cognizant of at the time. Yeah. All those things, I feel like a Jedi now. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm so centered. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm more, I'm not thinking that far ahead or behind. I just want to make what I'm doing today um, fantastic. Who was your Qui-Gon, by the way, a comedian was? Uh, man, we're really going down this Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so good. By yeah. the end, we're going to be wearing I would love to. Hoods well, and... well, because I feel it. Like, so, I don't know if you know, do you know Paul D'Angelo? Yeah, of course. So Paul, yep. Paul was my was my guy. Paul was, and when I was at Dublin's one night, he, Paul came he was with, great to me as well, man. Paul, Paul was a sweetheart, yep. and uh, Paul had said to me afterwards, and he's like, you know, your, your energy it's at it's at hundred fucking percent. Bring it down, bring it down. And and, he, and I would start, and I was I started. At he said hundred, telling you that. I, by I the know, way. I know exactly. I was, but I was at hundred and fifty. He's like, you yeah. gotta start slow. And then hit, and he and, sure. and, and I just remember working with him so much, and he was like the guy that I always give credit to. Yep. Who was your guy? Okay, so it, it, are we talking just comedy in terms? I think of, comedy. I think comedians. Uh, okay. Right now. Okay. So when I there were there was a lot of comics in New York that I I watched for that first like three or four years, and um, just amazing, prolific, and uh, character actors, and just uh, everything they put in stand up. But when I got to New York 
and Chappelle was there. Mm. And he was still a kid. I think I was 19. He might have been 16, 15 or 16. And then over those couple of years, believe it or not, watching Dave was like, oh, this guy's a master at this already. Wow. He has abilities, uh, especially his control over like tempo and being able to slow way down. I also came from that, like I go, wanted go, to go. get out of the gate. Yeah. Some of that probably is a little fear because you don't want to slow down because slowing down means maybe I hear something I don't want to hear, you right, know? Right. So I would watch him. And I learned so much. And then we did college gigs for a, a good chunk of time together. And I would just, you know, he'd say, he'd be like, man, the power is in the silence. And he really showed me. So he was one of those guys, and he still is. I mean, I, lo I love watching him. If I can see Chappelle perform somewhere, yeah. I feel like uh, it's always a master class yeah. with him. He's the one guy. He'd come in the rocks. He would come in, and he would do, he could show up at the club two, three hours, do just Workout material, and you yeah. just you don't want to leave your seat because you just know the brilliance. But is coming out. but so um, you know, really, you can actually see him contemplating and processing during you know saying unique, original, funny things. To have that culmination as a performer, that kind of uh, you know kind of strength or, yeah. or, or bravery to stop to think how I really feel about what I'm saying. I mean, that's. Uh, that's that is Zen right there. Yeah, That's true. amazing. Roxy, did you have something? Sorry. Uh, not a, uh, going back for a second. Yeah. To oh god, I'm random. I love jumping around, yes, man. Yeah. Well, I'm this always is, on shuffle on my yeah. uh, this is something devices. I've been curious about for years and years because, like I said, I'm a Boston girl also, and I dream of one day having the kind of success that you've had or Mark Wahlberg's had. And I think that Boston can kind of be a double-edged sword sometimes mm. because they are your biggest fan and your biggest allies until. And we saw that happen uh, with Mark before, and we've seen it with you with the Boston Strong situation. Yeah. How do you feel about Boston fans at this moment? Oh, I, I just came from, I did the Wang, uh, and it's the first time that I did a, like, a large-scale show. And I got really emotional. I mean, literally walked off to um, a standing ovation. and was, ch it, like, choked up and so proud that I could come home. And I knew, I knew that when all that stuff had happened, um, it was like five or six years earlier, uh, I just knew how it impacted the relationship that I had with my home, you know, where it all started. And all I was interested in doing at that point was just bettering myself and doing what I, I knew that Boston appreciates, which is you can't mail it in. They want you to give 100%. So coming back and, and finally having that kind of healing full circle moment was uh, maybe, uh, maybe one of the greatest moments in my career. I've done some cool stuff, but going back home and, and feeling like Boston was like, hey, you know what? We ruffled each other's feathers, and now it's like bygones. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of amazing. That's what it seems yeah. like this, for this entire thing, man. Because to be honest with you, I, I didn't, I didn't know all the stuff that you, as far as the, your new outlook on life, I could tell it from from talking, yeah. obviously. And it, I think it's obviously it's been working uh, really well. And congratulations to everything. Thank congratulations you. to American Exit, which is uh, available today, guys. You can check that out. And don't forget about Dane's show. If you are in Honolulu, you can go and check it out. And you can get it on your website. It's Everything's on DaneCook.com yeah. or follow me on Instagram. I put it up an exclusive clip, something different from, I think, what we saw here. Okay, so cool. you can see stuff about the tour and uh, and everything else. On awesome. There. Dude, it was a pleasure to have you. I hope you come back and, yeah, and join man. us again, brother. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, when we get back, uh, I think Finstock's running around the joint, but I don't know if I want to talk to him. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out after the break. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops in on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. 
Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well. Once again, it's every Saturday and Sunday on the Collider video feed, and also you can listen to us on podcast, on the Movie Talk podcast feed, every Saturday and Sunday. Hey guys, it's Dennis here, one of the hosts of Thrones Talk, our weekly Game of Thrones review show that happens live right after the episodes drop on Sunday night. So check us out. We talk about all the cool things that happen on Game of Thrones that night and what we think is gonna happen in the future. You can find it on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider videos, or you can find it on the podcast feed, both on the Collider TV Talk podcast feed and the Collider Factory podcast feed. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Hey guys, Perry Nemirov here to let you know that The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness, we talk about slashers, we talk about space horror, you name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. We also have clips on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out, get scared. Hopefully you survive the witching hour. What's up Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the blue brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Roxy, take it easy, will you? I cannot. Take it easy. I cannot. Well, you're losing your mind. Did, oh, boy. How did just, you, you contained it, though. I, I you tried contained to, it. And at the end, did you see when you were going to take the picture? I just had to start. I was like, do you remember your super bleeder bit? It's the first thing you like I Chris, used to you, tell. You were like Chris Farley. In, uh, uh, remember that one joke you did? When, remember when, that time? The time remember when you used that to. that time? I just, I grew up. Like, Listen, I yeah. didn't understand uh, stand-up. I didn't know stand-up comedian was a job. I, he was the first comedian I ever knew was a comedian. And I used to go to school and, and recite. Did you ever see him? Did you ever see him in concert? Yes. Oh, okay. I, Oh, I just, I love him. Is this him. your favorite guest we ever so had? so cool. Yes. Wow. Yes. You know what I like? Though? I love this. all of our guests. I'll but, yes. I'll, 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 but I'll tell you this, and this is the thing that he said, and Jared Havon is joining us. Hey, what's going hey, on, Jared? What's up? And Thanks for And the funny thing, Jared, also another Boston guy. How do you like my shirt, by the way? You like the shirt? It's terrible. You, you should like burn it after so we leave. It's so rude that he did that today. I love it. You know, what, you know what's so cares. funny? What's so funny is that, first of all, I knew it would start a conversation. Second of all. You were right. Yeah, and I knew, as I was going through, I was like, what t-shirt am I going to wear? I was like, wearing a Schmodown shirt. I'm like, nah. Got to wear the Yankees. You should have worn a Patriot shirt. Dude, I almost wore my Brady jersey. <laughs> Did you? I was well, going to wear it, but then I wasn't want, then on the realize, podcast then, with them, and I was yeah. like, that's going to be weird if and it's then you like he's I walking let, and you, past me, and I'm like, I'm wearing my Brady jersey just to meet you for two seconds. And you realize I wouldn't let you on the show afterwards. Obviously. Yeah. Or uh, um, you would yeah. have to burn it. Oh, what a cool guy, too. Yes. Yeah, I mean, well, oh. this is the thing. This is the thing. And I asked Alex. Um, I said to Alex, I was like, well, what, what did the chat? What was the chat saying? And they, they really loved it yeah. because it started, what I loved about it, and, and to be honest with you, it started with me too because I was one of those guys back in the day when, d during the time, because, and I was telling him, like, we never, we never really, he, when I was at the comedy store, he was at the Laugh Factory. And then when I stopped doing stand up, he started going around the comedy store a lot too. So we never really interacted <laughs> that much. Um, and I was one of those guys. I was never like, because uh, I, I always felt during that time that maybe, and I was probably, I may have been wrong from, from judging it to where the, I felt like he felt he was too good for the rest of us, right? And then I've heard. I, you thought he thought that about that's him. That's what I thought he thought. Um, and, and you know, from and you can tell, and that's kind of where the question went as far as how at one point we used to come around, comedians were like, oh, there's 
Dane. And he's like, no, I got it. I get that because I did the same thing myself to other comedians. And I thought that when he was going through that, because he won me over in the interview, to be honest with you, and and and, and I turned because I believe all that stuff he said, the Zen stuff, you can tell it with his with his career and the stuff that he's doing because you when you get to that level, when you get to that level and there's only you hit a ceiling and a lot of people want you to fall and if things aren't happening you can either stay there or you can find a new approach and i got to respect the man's new approach a hundred percent i mean i have better not bitter tattooed on my shoulder and i've only been through a percentage of the things he's gone through but when you lose your mom and your dad within nine months of each other both both to to cancer send your brother to jail have all the scrutiny uh like i was hinting about the uh boston strong situation where people were so livid with him like your own fans have turned against you all of that you go one way or the other, you go better or bitter, right? And he's just clearly taken all of that and been like, you know what, I'm gonna just be the best version of me that I can be and I am a creative and I wanna keep giving and I'm gonna get them back and right. he has and I just think that, what a cool, awesome guy. Yeah, Do you, you guys remember the joke that he did about The Dark Knight Rises? No. It was like oh, a well, week yeah, yeah, after yeah, yeah, the movie yeah, yeah, came yeah, out do, and he do, was I like, do, yes. he's like, it was a terrible situation but honestly, I saw The Dark Knight Rises and, and halfway through I was like, oh, somebody shoot me. Yeah, and he right. got a lot of crap for that yeah. too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so you can't right. say he's not controversial. Definitely. Well, but that was one of those things, though. That was another one of those things. We've talked about it on this show. That that one, that's the whole conversation, that big debate that we got into that day. Someone, you mean the one I'm a dictator for now? Yes. Yeah. Someone was filming him at, at the Laugh Factory. And he was trying something. And he was trying something new. It was, And like I said, and I stick by it, it was a bad joke. I wouldn't have told the joke. Uh, I think that it was, at, it, I think it was, it was a, a time where maybe you shouldn't have done it. But on the stage... It's his right to try it. I agree. And someone but recorded it. It's insensitive. It's not it homophobic. No. It's not sexist. You know, it's, it's, insensitive. it's insensitive. That's why I have a different. I think it's different trying one of those jokes that's insensitive than telling a joke that shows your true colors. But, exactly. But I totally it, agree. Right. With you. But it, but well, but someone could argue and say, well, his true colors is he doesn't have any empathy for those people, which which I which is not the case at all. But my point is that, that is that he was trying out something and someone filmed him, and that's why I think a lot of times those cam- cameras should be banned. I agree. From, I agree. from comedy. Close. We're all on the same page. Same yeah, page. you're just trying to make a laugh, and sometimes you go too far. But the yeah. only way you know if you've went too far is if you try it and realize you went too far. Right. Um, Are you going to send this to Brett? Because we spent 10 minutes talking, having, about, talking about Brett. Dane Cook was talking about Brett for 10 minutes. you yeah. got to send that to him. Like, I'll tell you. I, are you kidding me? Brett is the luckiest man alive right he's, now. It's so funny because he's like here. I mean, and I think because he was my peer for so long that it was like, I don't see him in the... The I mean, way I, that I, I do. I, I appreci- yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I appreci- <laughs> he's up here. Right. See, <laughs> for see, me. see, I appreciate his accomplishments yes. for sure. But like I was, I rem- like I said, I remember being at Dublin's and he was just another guy on this. He brought the house down, no doubt. He was like the star of the night for sure. But he wasn't Dane Cook. He yeah. was just the comedian that was coming in here. Everybody was doing big sets. Like, oh, now Dane's going to come in and crush the crowd. And then he would take off. Um, but I can see, like, he, Adam Sandler was kind of like that for yeah. me, you know? Yeah. And, like, Dice was kind of like but that then for me. He's also from Boston. Yes. So that there's hometown that. Hometown hero. Yeah, yeah, he's a hometown hero. And he had done, he was so. He bought his mom a house at 29, right. and like he said, he was a welfare kid growing up. He was such a great guy, and then there was that fall from grace, right. and then you just root for him so hard, and now it feels like he's just back. I I don't know if you feel the same way, Jared. Oh, totally. I mean, I think that he's always kind of been around. He had he did have that lull, but he, I love Dan Cook from the beginning because his I I really enjoyed his comedy, but. Like I even watched Torgasm. Do you remember Torgasm yeah, of course. at all? Dude, yeah, I yeah. Was, well, Jay, we talked about Jay Davis. Jay Davis yeah. was on the road with him. Jay and Robert. It's funny, like driving yeah. past Laugh Factory, and uh-huh. I see Jay Davis headlining. I'm like, man, I remember that fucking guy from Torgasm. Jay Davis is the guy who got me and Dublin's. Which is Are you Dublin. serious? They, Jay was the guy. Who, Jay's the guy that got Dane Cook into Dublin. a Boston club. Well, yeah, but oh, Jay, that's Dublin's. But, but no, not Dublin's was no. the one. So Jay, not Boston club. It was, oh, okay. it was, it was I got LA confused. club. Yeah, yeah. It was an LA club guy. So Jay Davis ran Dublin's. Which was this big? It was yeah. this bar on Sunset Boulevard. It's no longer there, but it was this. It's this big, huge. You would have gone. You would have been there every Tuesday. Is it I, Irish I or is it yes. like yes. Dublin? It was an my Irish bar, yeah. Dublin's. Okay. Dublin's Irish. Okay. But it's it was, one. Of, it was the, one of the best bars in L.A. at the time, yes. and I can't believe they the comedy, got rid of it. Well, the comedy night was Tuesday nights, and you mean it, it had everybody. I mean, like celebrities were going there. I remember I performed one night in front like Drew Barrymore. And like oh, it's I, me, it's you, but uh, but it, it was it was just it was the spot. It yeah. was the spot. It was because it was the comedy store, it was the Laugh Factory. But somehow Jay Davis turned this 
bar on Tuesday nights into this just epic place. And I remember that I had just gotten out to LA. I was doing comedy for a little bit. And you had to do like this tryout. You had to do like a two minute, three minute tryout for Jay beforehand. And I did it. And he's like, yeah, you're in. So and I was in. I would perform at Dublin's almost every week, you know? And it was it was the one that, because that was my type of crowd. What year was this? This was 2000. 2000. 2000 was okay. when. And that was the first time I remember. Because I had also been, I told uh, Dane, this as much as when I was performing at the Boston Comedy Club, I got people used to tell me I looked like him, whatever, mm-hmm. too. And in 2000, um, that's I really started getting it because my and, and I had a high energy act. And then I remember Jay saying, Oh, yeah, 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 you, you should you should meet Dane. And because Dane was coming up there, I mean, Dane was the headliner of Dublin, so he came in there, he just would destroy the place. Wow, but and that was kind of my first. That was my first kind of knowledge of him as a comedian because, like, he was, he, you were, he was, he was, the, he was the show. He was the, he was the. But that was show. before he even became big because Harful Swallowed yeah. didn't come out till like 2003. I think. Yeah, he, he when he really hit big was like 2004. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. kind of like the big wave. And oh yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I like I said, that's why to me it was always like I always knew him from from coming. And the other one that I met, and I met her in '99. I remember being at Luna Park, and I was like, "You're really aging yourself." Well, right I now. wonder yeah. who you're going to say right now. I have. And so I remember being up on stage, huh. and cause I, I've told you my Sarah Silverman story m- many times. Is it Sarah Silverman? This is not Sarah Silverman, oh. but like this is this is actually <laughs> this might have been actually two thousand also. And Mark, do you know who he's going to talk about? I, right? I was going with Sarah Silverman, but it's now not, Sarah not. Silverman was there. But I told you my Sarah Silverman. Yeah, story. you did. But two thousand, and this blonde girl's going up, and she's crushing it. And I remember just kind of shooting the shit with her on the side, and I was like, "Yeah, she's really funny." And then she just never really came around as much. It was Chelsea. Chelsea Handler. Handler. Uh, Chelsea Handler. I knew. I knew. I sensed it coming. Cool. That's so cool. Chelsea, How was she? Amazing. I mean, she was, was cool to me. She's wow. very cool to me. Um, we used to like, we a couple of drinks. I remember at the bar. Really little so party. fangirling. You're so Big high time. on life now, right now. I, I, see, I love seeing. Pretty awesome. I can't bring me down. I, I am so glad that I asked Dane to come in on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday from Thursday. Oh, uh, Tuesday. I would have. I, I did that how happy for she got. But as the end, as we're wrapping, as we're wrapping up, I was like, "You got to come back." And he's like, "Yeah, I'll come back." And he's like, the second time's always easier. And she, yeah. you can see in Roxy's eyes. Oh my God, there's going to be a second yeah, yeah. time. Oh, I said it to Dane him Cook as he was leaving. I was two. like, "We well, can't wait to have you back anytime, anytime, man." <laughs> I also don't think Dane Cook gets enough credit for kind of revolutionizing social media to an extent because yes, he was yeah. one of the first. They talked about that. Never mind. We did. No, no, no. You're right. He was one of the first people with one million friends on MySpace, and he was the one posting like where he was going to be and what club and then who was in his now, top eight he, his top oh, eight he, oh, he, I mean Tom was yeah, obviously one yeah. he, he utilized it he really oh. utilized it and that, well that's he why he was one of the first people to, to do it to me it was the uh, he, he <laughs> utilized, like, and that's it was the website he oh yes yeah, Let's take a break for a second. Because if you hadn't seen the interview with Dean, go back and watch it for sure. And we're going to take clip outs and put it on the Collider Live channel. And that actually transitioned into don't forget a week and less yeah, than a week. Yeah, we're coming right up. Less on than it. a week. Monday, this Monday, you will not find this show on this channel anymore. It's going to be on the Collider Live channel. So you have to go on over. You still find it in the same podcast feed. So you don't have to worry about that. But as far as the Collider Live YouTube channel, subscribe there. 75,000 of you already have done Good. that. Thank you, Shia. But make sure that 150 do, because if you do 150 by, by July, 18th, which is Comic Con, we'll do a live show. Because I'm not going to lie, yes. I feel like they're slacking a little bit. Because we are trying to get to 150. And we've, uh, we've, we've, had a, we've had a. Oh, we've hit a little bit of a lull here. 150 is a huge number. And I have, I mean, Riley and Christian, how many times have I asked you guys, I want to do a live show more than anybody in the world? Right. Yeah, Collider Live, do. live. And I need this. So for me, do remember what? Please. Please. Yeah, just, please, just, guys, please, please yeah. Let's just get to 150. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Not only will we do the live show, but Roxy is also going to produce it. So that's going to be <laughs> yeah. really fun. Um, so mm, about we, that. What, we have some other cool guests coming on besides Jared Heyman, of course. Uh, I'm not yes, cool. Yes, we you have. Cool. Uh, well, well, we guys. have. We have somebody coming tomorrow. Who do we have coming tomorrow? Do I know this? Do you, you do know this. You're on the email chain. Do you want to? Do you want to announce it? Yeah, go ahead. Who we got? It's Tiffany Smith. Oh, Tiffany yeah. Smith is coming yeah. tomorrow. Oh. Megan Markle. Megan herself. Markle herself. Yeah, is coming. Yes, she's coming. And then we uh, we also have next week. We have Aladdin. Himself. Okay. Oh, so cool. Shit. That's really And cool. we mentioned somebody, I won't say who, in who? today's interview who's actually coming in. Why'd you do that? You did what you just did to me what I have done to you five thousand times and I don't like the way my medicine tastes at all. That's Christian. why I did it. I wanted you to I don't like it. Just put it on the universe, yeah. you know? Just yeah. let everybody know who's coming. True. But I he like is it. coming. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I Oh, huge guests we have. Wow. Do you think with. Tiffany has met Megan or gets to meet no. her through this process? No. Lifetime doesn't have that kind of pull? No, I don't think I don't think this is an authorized um, movie. No. 
but mm-hmm. I, I, w- I would say probably not. Uh, that was. Did another... she ever meet her when you knew her? No, because I didn't know Tiffany at that point. Uh, because when I knew Megan, she was married to my friend, um, and like she, I met her through events. I think she'd come to a couple shows that he had seen of mine. He used to bring her to. How many uh, times has Megan been married? Once. No, twice. Oh. Wait, well, twice. 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 Oh, well, twice. Twice. Now. Twice. Okay, because okay, you said twice. once, and I was like, wait a minute. No, no, no. no. I, I, I know I the first time. I, I know no, this no. marriage. No, no, no. How, how, many first women, I didn't know that. how many women do you guys think got divorced after hearing that <laughs> Meghan Markle had been divorced and then married a prince? A prince. Right, so they go, oh, skyrocketed. <laughs> you know, the divorce rate. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, other right. princes are there? There's no other prince, right? Um, I mean, of different, not of England, but, you know, like Wales. Right. That's really rolling mm-hmm. the dice. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know of a single prince in Wales? You, Wait, you made it she sound buried like... a prince. You know what? I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. Fuck you, dude. <clears throat> but I'm Myrtle, you were in on suits. Yeah. We've been married 30 years. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm getting myself a motherfucking Done. prince. Myrtle. I'm going to wax my asshole. If, if you are under 30 and your name is Myrtle, I'm you looking for you. I'm looking for you. <laughs> I heard he what happened, things. but I moved he past moved it. Past no, I'm pretty it. sure I'll, Ashley would leave me for Aladdin, so I'm going to make sure that she's oh, not around when yeah, he, he comes in. Yeah, don't show up Tuesday yeah. of this <laughs> no, next Tuesday. week. Then. Are Keeping you guys uh, paying attention to this so. Prince Ali so? Aladdin uh, controversy on no, the internet? What is no, what's the controversy? Oh, now what? What happened now? What happened now? Okay, Take I'm it over right. it. I just, I'm so over it. I didn't know this controversy. They dropped the number. They dropped Prince Ali. Okay, right? Oh, yeah, I saw that. And people... Are <laughs> living. They don't like it. Oh, I thought uh, when I signed on, I thought there was going to be an actual issue with it because right. of the amount of hatred I was seeing. All right, let, me see, let me see. Let's let's go to the clip. I know we can't play the whole thing because it's on copyright. Collider.com. I just, I, I just want to see. I don't want to go to the Collider.com. I want to see. I want to see the the. Yeah, all right, I want to see the dislikes. I want to see the dislikes. Oh, oh, wait, why is there no, It's on Twitter. The, 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 oh. People well, are saying boycott Aladdin now. Why? Why now? The, there's nothing. I thought it was going to be like. Racist or yeah, something. something. They just don't like. They it. just don't. Okay. The controversy is the internet has decided that because of the things like Sonic, whatever, they're going to get them to change it. Like they're all like Dude, up in arms because of the Sonic, thing. right? Yeah. Right. Oh, people are up in arms over this. And you know what? Because Will Smith kind of like does a little rapping of the Prince Ali. Yeah, it's a did, different take. He did that on either Kimmel or Jimmy right, Fallon. We, and should we play a little bit of this thing? Can we? I think YouTube will get mad at us. I don't know. Let's play a little bit of it. We'll play 20 seconds. Let's just roll the dice. Just throw the yeah. dice. Just talk over it. Okay. All so right. well, this is for him. anybody listening yeah. on iTunes, it's like, you know, the big yeah. parade situation. Roxy, and there he goes He's dancing. He talk over it. No, hands. don't talk over it. <laughs> Sorry, Cody. Please talk over it. I, right. I'm trying, Cody. I'm oh, trying. Fine. Uh, I see. I see what you're trying to do here, Cody, and it makes a lot you. of sense. I, yeah. I, his hair, his hair. There's things. There's stuff. There's dancing. There's elephants. Yeah, there's an elephant. There's tons of colors. Yeah. What's wrong with this handsome. so far? It, it, I, it's, I mean, it, does, think, it looks like a kid's movie. You would think that somebody had it, murdered oh, right. somebody based on the, the reception what? online. It's a chi- it's a children's movie. Yeah, it, but you know what? It's all the people who watched Aladdin as a kid that are now adults like that they're are saying, complaining on Twitter because it's too much of a kids movie for them. No, now. what they're upset about is they're saying this song was written for Robin Williams' voice and that. Will Smith does not have Robin Williams' voice, uh, which no, is which is fact because they're, they're different two different people. people. Yeah, no, so maybe they should have, have Robin Williams. They should have just gotten Jamie Costa to do the role. All right, uh, um, can you? Yeah, yeah. Fair you want to go to Twitter? <laughs> you got to check it out. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, they don't like it. I mean, listen, like I'm, I'm not a big fan now. of it yeah. either. But at the same time, I'm not going to go on Twitter and think they should take down the movie. That's he, absurd. It's absurd. Here, here's what. Here's uh, again the way that I'm going to make this this judgment call. I'm taking my daughter to see the movie on Tuesday night, or yeah, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, I'm going. <gasps> I'll be there. Are you Yay. going? Mm-hmm. You have the premiere? No. Oh. Oh, oh, my Tuesday night's a screening. Your oh. Tuesday night's the premiere? Yes. It's not as cool. Mm-hmm. Humble brag. <laughs> Humble brag. But uh, you know why I go to these? Oh, good. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, good for you, you. But you know why I go to these, the, the Aladdin, the Disney ones, this particular, excuse me, the live action, is because uh, my daughter. Like I, I would probably just want to go to the screening for this one if it wasn't for her. What you know? are you talking about? The after party for Aladdin should be dope city. Do you understand that I want to be sleeping by nine o'clock? I don't. Can I have your life? No. You, you sure? <laughs> no. Kid would be. Roxy, I could deal with on Legos. I could deal with Viv, but your little one. Ooh. No. Yeah. You don't what want, do I do? You nothing. You would do nothing what except do panic. I do? You'd panic. Panic. In a sweat. Oh, well, I'm panicking so, thinking so about it. So here's the next question: When are you having kids, Jared? Uh, next year. Are you going for kids already? I think we're going to start next Look, year. I knew the answer to that. Well, breaking news. Obviously, yeah. we've talked about it a lot. Right. 
But so we're getting married in August, and then nice. Ashley's going to be 32 in March next year, and we want more than one. Right. So we want to start probably next Smart. summer. Smart. Knock my on wife, wood. That's my wife was when we started. Isn't it and then, crazy? She has to think like that. <laughs> that you oh, guys yeah. have yeah. to think like that. I put in, uh, you know, maybe a good. Three minutes of work, and then uh, I'm. Then you're out. Then I'm out. Then you did. All she on did, you, Ash. She's got to do the work. She's yeah. got to do the work. Yeah. I know. When did you guys start talking about kids? Uh, we started talking. Bachelor in Paradise. Yeah, once we got engaged. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Bachelor in Paradise season two, right, about four years two. ago. Right. Uh, we started talking about kids before we even got into a relationship. Uh, I think, uh, but we had serious talks about when we started, like the timeline. Right. Probably when we got engaged, and we were like, you know, we we want to get married next summer, and then maybe the summer after start tra- trying to have kids. Look at you. Good for you. We'll see. Awesome. I know. Excited we for the keep wedding? Up. Uh, very excited. Yeah, man. So it's coming in, It's coming along. The guest list right now is the hardest part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, are you there yet? Riley got cut? Yeah, I mean, did, we, yeah. did you cut Riley? Yeah, yet? Riley, I've been meaning to talk to yeah. you. Yeah, something. no, that's okay. Yeah, I had to cut you yeah. too, my friend. Um, uh, well, Roxy, yeah. Roxy, you and I are still on the list. Oh, yeah. I know we're yeah, 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 yeah. still on the we list. But yeah, so is yeah, you're the... my flower girl and you're my best man. Perfect. I'm a great flower girl. I've done it three times. Oh, yes. great, perfect. Can, can we just can we just take microphones and broadcast from the side? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, I would love commentary. A, a collider live episode of the wedding from the wedding. Done. Perfect. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to fly to Rhode Island. That's the only downside to that. That's fine. We'll bring this table as well. Great in August though. Perfect weather. Oh, what August. kind of numbers are you looking at? 180. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, so, you have to run it. I do. We're, we're trying to keep it at under 100. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mine, so mine, 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 mine was 10, oh, I think 103, if that's, if that's With true. With family, it's just so tough because it's, if you have big families, yes. then. Oh, impossible. Right. Guess what? I am cutting most of my family right. Who needs in lieu home? of my friends wow. because it's Who needs just. I, listen, I love my cousin Trenton. But I never see. Him. Haven't seen him in months. I haven't. But seen are you going to write Trenton a letter and you're saying, right. "What do we haven't seen in years?" Right. Dear no. Trenton, you're not invited. Right. No, I'm just not going to do anything. Why does it sound like a sitcom? Dear, Dear Trenton, Trenton, you're not invited. Dear Trenton, Dear you're Trenton. not invited. That's the second. I one. like that. I like it too. Riley, 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 Riley. Trenton's not right. invited to a lot of things. Can well, I come? What would that show be about? Dear Trenton, you're not invited. Dear Trenton, you're not invited. I think it's just Trenton. He's been trying so hard in his lifetime to be accepted. Yeah, to fit in. And he's so lame. I see you think he's lame, but I have you met my cousin. No, but but Trent the, is such a good guy. He's yeah. a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a good guy, but creative. he's a lame. Yes. And he's not invited, like, in high school, he's not invited no. to parties. He's not invited lame. to prom. His best friend's lame. name is Lewis, who, oh. writes in the, who writes in the shows. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> but Lewis. Yeah, Lewis is a real dick Lewis. Bag. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's not as big as no Donald. Yeah, right. he's no Donald. Um, all right, listen. I actually, it's funny, because I asked you to be here today, uh, obviously, because, you know, Dan was coming in. Big we could fan. shoot the shit. But something just kind of happened. Organically last night that was amazing. Oh yeah, it's amazing. So I'm sitting on my couch last night. I'm checking my emails as my wife is watching The Bachelor, which she. Oh, does. Bachelorette started. Yes, right? Bachelorette started. Bachelorette, last night. bro, get it I'm right. I'm sorry. So I apologize. <laughs> so I, you know, these knuckleheads are getting out of the cab, the cab, the uh, the limo, and they're doing they're on their fucking roller skates, they're popping out of boxes, and they're and they're and what? They're, yeah, yeah, that's doing what, that thing. I could, it's I could, a long story, dude. I could smell Elon. Basically, coming up with the idea, you oh, know, to where you he, don't know what Alon's gone. What's going on? Wait, what happened? You didn't know this? No, what? Oh. No, what? Yeah, dude, Alon's been gone. When did, this when? is his first. This is the first season without Alon. What happened? What so, we... so Alon Wait, Gale. What? I'm going to tell you right now. Alon, <laughs> Alon Gale. I'm with you, Roxy. Alon Gale was a producer when I was there. He actually was coming up. He was really low on the list when I started coming up, and then at, when I was producing at The Bachelor, and then he became the guy. He was like the, yeah, he was like the main guy. He's like so, the guy. So why did Big, he leave? Uh, it's if it's public. Can you talk about it, or it's not public? It's it's public that he's he's he left, but, but it's it's kind of from my understanding, it's very mutual. Okay, was there a controversy? Yeah, a there little was bit. a controversy. Okay, so I mean, anytime like con- a big wig leaves, there's yeah. always going to be some sort of controversy. True, he, yeah. not controversy. On you know what? Side. Bring up bring, Cody. So Jared doesn't have to tell me. Bring up Alon Gale leaving Bachelor. Is that what I don't know if there's too much articles written. I mean, there's articles written about it, but no, not about e- like E L A N E L A N. Sorry. But Alan is doing just fine. Alan actually just partnered up with Ashton Kutcher on uh, a, an app called Date Night. Oh, Makes I've sense. seen this dude. It's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's friends with James Gunn. He's like, he's yeah, a, I've he's seen dead. him. Yeah. I met James Gunn through him. Through yeah, Alan, yeah, yeah. it was the coolest moment ever. No longer part. Here's what happened. It says. So let's let's go 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 back. Uh, Mike Fly shocked fans on Thursday night when he tweeted that one of Bachelor's executive producers was no longer part of the franchise. I can't comment on why Alan is no longer part of the Bachelor team, but we wish him his best. And let's see, Bachelor Nation took to the comments. Doesn't really say. 
Doesn't really sound. No, okay. I, I mean, wow. from my understanding, it was it was mutual, very That's mutual. Seems about. Like, yeah. All right. I mean, he was doing a lot of things too. He wrote a book. He was producing. Okay. Oh wait, here we go. Says, the parting away though isn't as unexpected to those behind the scenes as it might seem. Alon had been working on other projects over the few years and considering an and considering an exit, and then it continues. Okay, but 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 da. Uh, it doesn't really say. Before but I was he, on the show, I always wanted to be a writer, and yes. I didn't really have anything yeah. to write about. For the last 10 years, I have wonderful because I've traveled a lot of experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, his big thing, he is like pretty much the one who came up with Bachelor in Paradise. Like that is his baby. Right. And obviously that show has really took off. Took yeah, off. because when I was there, it was Bachelor Pad, and yeah. that was just a total sex show. That's all yeah. it was. It was, it was, it was like, like Rock of Love. It was, it was, it was very <clears throat> off-brand. Entertaining, but off-brand. But anyway, uh, so I, well, then I was wrong. I just there was part there's there's things last night that I just it felt like a on stamp, but I guess it wasn't. But anyway, not the point of the story. The point was I'm sitting there, and then Cody, uh, I hear this. My name is John Paul Jones. Okay. My friends call me John Paul Jones. Okay. So you can call me John Paul Jones. This guy, gold. Riley, this guy is gold. gold. I don't he, understand. He sh so he shows up and he's this <laughs> tall blonde guy and he's got a face and he kind of looks like this. Can we see him? He kind of looks yeah. like Chad Paul. Michael Murray. He does. That's but he funny. says, and when he says, he goes, "My name is John Paul My Jones." My name is John Paul Jones. And you can call me John Paul Jones. My friends call me John Paul Jones. And you can, so call. You can call me John Paul Jones. Look at John Paul Jones. There he People is. People call me. But dude, honestly, he looks like he should be on a Roxy, yacht. It was not a bad thing because he walked up. It was very sincere where he was like, my name's John Paul Jones. My friends call me John Paul Jones. You can call me John Paul Jones. I'll see you inside. And he hugged her and just walked away. Dude, and it was, it was so like, weird. okay, that was actually yeah. kind of funny. Wait, she did he last? Did, did yeah. he make it through the night? Yeah, yeah, he got a rose. He got good. the final rose. Oh, good, good, good. John Paul Jones made it through. Did she say, will you accept this rose, John Paul Jones? I think so. I don't remember exactly. She probably <laughs> um, did, of course. It's so too much of a gimmick now. I saw a post last night, and McCook and I have had this debate many times on the show, and maybe Jared can win me over. And I don't want, but unless, unless it's, it, it, and you're a genuine dude, so you be be genuine in this in this response, because I really want to know. And if you can't comment on it, don't comment on it. Probably if um, you tell a joke, and then somebody no, else no, not tells that one, not oh, that one, not that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> The girl. Uh, the, the Hannah Beast. Hannah B. So I saw Ashley posted something, and I, I actually really liked Ashley's uh, Instagram post, yeah. just basically saying thank you for representing kind of the, maybe the, the goofy girl that can't really express herself. And I think Hannah B. has been the worst choice for, for Bachelorette so far. Why is that? I don't. Well, first of all, I don't find her that attractive. But that, that's that's one thing. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a contestant. So that has nothing to do with me. Um, I. I just found her so uninteresting on that show, The Bachelor, and I felt like she was almost, they were painting her to be the villain for half the season. Yeah, she very much was. And then, it's like, there's, I I think, I don't feel find her she to be as genuine as they think. She also has nothing to say. Like, every time you try to have a conversation, with the, the response is usually something along the like, oh, definitely right. I think she was pretty good last night, though. Well, she I didn't see the but whole thing. But granted, you're, I will give you this, they are prepping for that particular episode for how long right. that, like... She should be prepared for it, right. right? And she was. They're prepping for what? They, they basically let her know one. that night one is coming. Here's all these uh, people that are coming. The thing was, like, on her season, on Colton's season, uh, she just wasn't able to speak, and uh, she couldn't formulate sentences. Like, she had a very difficult what do you time. Mean she wasn't able to speak. Yeah, remember, she I showed her. You, you, she was you, very nervous. You wrote to me, and you said you couldn't stand her. Oh. Remember? Remember, you wrote, remember when you wrote me back? And yeah, like, I, I think can't so. Stand I here. think so. Yeah. Like, it was like a brief clip, right? Yes. Yeah, there was a moment where she was supposed to give a toast on, on TV, and she literally just could The words were not coming to her head. And then later on, uh, after the final rose, after she was announced at the Bachelorette, they were like, "How do you feel?" And she was like, "I, um, I just," uh, and she Not seemed articulate. like distracted. Yeah. And so obviously people were like, "This girl's supposed to carry a season." I think she's gonna be fine. I think she's quirky and awkward. I, okay. I agree that, I think she got the Bachelorette because of the whole Kaylin drama, <coughs> where it was like, nobody, not to be a jerk, I mean, I'm sure Kaylin's very nice in, in person, nobody really liked the way she came off on the show, right. because she seemed very put on, and Hannah B was the complete opposite of that, and those right. two were going head to head, and right. I think that's where people were like, no, we want to see Hannah B more, because Kaylin seems fake, and at least Hannah B seems real. Did you meet Hannah B? Yeah, I've met her a couple times. We actually filmed a, like a, a small thing on this season, we'll see if it airs. Um, yeah, I like her. I, I, don't I, don't have enough to judge. I, I, yeah, it's hard to really. It's tough. To, yeah. It's tough to tell. You know, I, you meet someone for like fifteen minutes, and it's like, yeah, you seem nice. I don't really know. Yeah. I don't know. You guys have done something though. Both Jared and and Ashley have done something that not a lot of people are able to do, and it's to continue. And what you've done smart. Take a page maybe off of Dane Cook's book. <laughs> not only did they blow up their Instagram and their Twitter and carry on kind of past this thing because if if the bachelor ended tomorrow they would still they would have a pretty big career inside of the social media stuff it's more ashley than me ashley is so ashley's 
very smart because what she does is she asks for forgiveness and not permission. And I think a lot of other people are very scared, you know, because you're dealing with big wigs and, yeah. and the first time you're ever dealing with TV and production companies and it's like, I don't want to piss them off where Ashley will just do it and then they'll be like, why would you do that? Right. And she's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you mad. I'm just trying to, you know, better right. my career. Right. And so after, like, it's already done, there's not much they can do. And then everything's already, you know, blows over and it's forgiven. Wait, so. what was the rest of your compliment? Sorry. Um, well, that was uh, well, that was a lot of it. I mean, okay. uh, but but <laughs> I'll uh, just explain but, why. But the other, thing, but what they have done that you don't see often is, like he said, whether or not they show up, they shot a scene for this season. They were they sh- they were in a scene last season. They were on patch. I mean, they somehow continue because the fans and that's not somehow the fans respond to them the fans love them yeah. right and and you can see why because like I said when I when I met him I knew him from Bachelor in Paradise from my wife watching and I saw him at Screen Junkies when I met him and he was like oh I'm such a big fan of Rose I'm like I know who you are right and we did, and we had a conversation and I was like okay he's a genuine like dude so it transfers over and Ashley who they portrayed one particular way on that show is not that way all the way through they portrayed her almost as a villain she's very emotional obviously oh, yeah. there's certain things but she She's, but she's actually a so much cooler in person. So much cooler oh, yeah. in person. She's so awesome yeah, in person. Paint yeah, they paint her like she's like a, like a, a disaster a lot of the times in that show, and she's the farthest thing from it. Yeah, um, I but agree. But you keep showing up on these shows, and they keep asking you to come back. Is it is is it because? And it's also because it was, remember that thing that happened that we keep busting um, Chris Harrison's balls on, where he's just when he throws to that that show last year, the premiere, and you had the majority of the guys who couldn't speak, and then the you had Jerry, time, yeah. and he could actually get his he could actually get his thoughts out. Yeah, he wasn't Har- Harrison gave it. me props on air, which is yeah. one of the coolest moments yeah, of my like, life. Look at you, you have a hosting career. Who who knew? And like we knew, we knew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who knows, Chris? But we then do. those other guys that should never be doing that ever again. I remember when I first met you too uh, was at Screen Junkies, yeah. and we talk about meeting Dane Cook, dude. You were it was like. You were a wow. celebrity in my eyes. Wow, you guys. Yeah. I flew. I don't know if I told you the story, but I. F- so I was there the previous Thursday. You were going for movie fights on the following Thursday. I was at Screen Junkies, and at the time, Andy Sicknor yeah. uh, told me, it was like, hey, next week, Christian Harloff's going to be here for Star Wars fight. I was flying back to Rhode Island on Saturday. So you stayed? No. Oh. I flew back to Rhode Island yeah, on Saturday. Netball. Flew back to Los Angeles on Wednesday wow. just to meet you. Why don't you just, just DM me? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I feel so weird. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, I, I was like, I have to, because I was a big, I, you know, big in the right. YouTube scene before, like, it was AMC. And schmoes right. and, and screen junkies and, and and blah 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 and now it's like this huge collider. How funny thing. would it have been though? Because when, when was your first season of that show? 2015. And I was like two years removed at that point. But how funny would it be if I actually would have stayed and would have been a producer on your, yeah. your show? Because you wouldn't you would have known, I guess, because I was still making YouTube videos. That yeah, I would have known. It would have been weird. Well, I don't be, know if they would have let you do that. Why? Well, I've done it. I was doing it. But be a high up producer there I and be. Yeah, I was doing it, and it, that was the reason I left that. Oh, and this hold this thought because this actually plays into what's going on on Friday. So we did like last week. We did the kind of in impromptu one on one with myself and Roxy. Are we doing it? Yeah, remember? You, no, you told me you'd call me. Oh yeah, we're doing. It. Oh, all right. So here, so this seems like a wow. personal conversation. Should we? I know. Yeah. Mingle well, amongst ourselves. Us. You're actually part of this too. So what we're gonna do is uh, mm. because we, myself and Riley and a few others are going to Houston for the big uh, match between Andrew Guy and Ben Bateman, which you can still get tickets. It's the ShmodownLive.com. We'll be War. there. It's gonna be awesome. Um, can I come? No. Okay. But what you can do is we're gonna do a pre-tape, sorry, one-on-one interview. Myself, you, and uh, and Riley will be in the room. We're gonna pre-tape it, and we will air it on Friday in place of the show. So here's the deal. Okay. I have a million bajillion questions for you, yes. but also you guys at home tweet at me at Roxy Stryer. Let me know what questions you have for Christian because we've gone over a lot of the career stuff, but there's been like this legend, the myth, the legend of Christian Harloff that I really want to get into and okay. get to the bottom of. So I want to hear from you guys what areas you want to make sure we hit on. Uh, are you that? talking about that the, the, the 2006 era? That is, that is in fact what well, I'm I told talking about. I was a part I, of that as I told well, Roxy, so I yeah. can help. Please do. And I told Roxy, I'd give her. It depends on who, though. But I told her I would give her either phone numbers or emails of of people that she wanted to talk to. So yeah. we can talk about that afterwards. But well, we're gonna the be, one that cheated on you. No, she's not going to be available. Uh, she loves. <laughs> she loves. She loves doing. I'm gonna she's get her not going to return your right phone call. Right yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I here I have is. a question for Jared. You were kind of in the middle of one, but it's fine. Go I'm ahead. Step on. Go ahead. You've never done that before. Uh, yeah, it's true. Because uh, we've known each other for long enough now that I feel like I can ask you this. Yeah, being, you can ask me anything. Being from New England to New England. I feel like you, I don't know Bachelor people at all, but Uh I feel like if a guy that was like 
you that I went to high school with went on The Bachelor, we would give him so much crap for so many years because, like, looking for love. Do your high school friends just, like, let you live it down that this is how you met the love of your life and, like, this is where you are? Can I answer that for him? Yeah. There's no chance. Laughing straight to the bank. No, there's no chance because he, A... Has a very hot fiance. That's one. Totally. Two. But now, two. Now when he, he didn't does. have that fiance. Every woman in the world was probably chasing him and getting hundred percent. But so still, like you got. Guys... If you're from Boston, you dig at each other for things. Why don't you guys like... just talk about it? And I'll be in the other room. <laughs> yeah, so I asked go... my friend Jared. And I was asking. I, I was just. That's that's my interpretation of it. Maybe I'm wrong. Me no, too. I notice how people treated me differently. Yeah. Even really? like my friends from high school. They just immediately, because I was all I was the guy that coasted through high school. Like I was never really bullied all that bad. I was never popular. Just kind of floated by, right? right. And then I was on the show, and you could just immediately oh, tell boy. people were reaching out to me. Why didn't you tell me you're on the show? From people I haven't talked to in like ten years right. since high school. And they're like, why didn't you tell me? That's crazy, man. How's things going? And then like I could even tell in person how people would just talk to me differently and treat me differently because, because of the fame. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And it was so weird. And also, like, very, uh, I don't know, made me feel good because, like, I was never looked at that guy. And then all of a sudden I was on The Bachelorette. And, like, not only, like, were my friends doing it, but people were just coming up to me and being like, oh, my God, you're Jared. And it's like, and the other thing with him, though, opposite of But he was also rare, though. He was rare on the show. And that's what I said to you when I first met you, though, too. There are a lot of these people that come off either either fake or or, or sometimes bad edits. And they come, he can't, they, not only did they edit in him, him well, and they portrayed him. They portrayed him to who you're he talking really about is. people who watch the show. But I'm not talking about. I'm talking about people who knew him when he was a kid. Like when oh, I yeah. when we were at Schmodown um, in Chicago, yes. I was with one of my best childhood friends, and I was walking in line, and people were shouting Roxy, Roxy, yeah. and he could not stop making fun of me. Like he oh. was looking at them, and he was like, "You like you guys are fans of this person." Right, right. Uh, like my brother-in-law will right, never right, let right. me live it down. <laughs> like literally, when we when it first happened, people would come up to me like, "Can I take a picture?" My brother-in-law, who's like six four, would be like, "Yeah, twenty bucks." And then yeah. like these poor little girls would be like, "Oh, here you go." He's like, "I'm just messing around." Right. Because he's like, like, "You want a picture of this asshole?" They right. can't imagine that like you right. you're the person that people know. So people yeah. close to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah your yeah, friends, course, like your high school, like your best friends. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. Mine are my high schoolers. I don't know who your best friends are. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, th- it's quite funny because they notice. I'm sure the same thing with you guys where like if somebody spots you they, they'll notice it before you do because right. they're like oh well, I remember my dad my dad is the biggest one because he'll like he thinks it's the coolest thing even though he'll never admit to it but we'll be walking through public and like he, somebody will be like kind of go like that and my dad will literally be like yeah it's him it's him <laughs> yeah. my dad shut up you so can't proud. say that imagine like someone imagine because we all have minor success when it comes to this imagine someone like Dane Cook though that's what oh, because, I know. because my thing is with, with him that you gotta and one of the things I wanted to get that I wanted to talk to him about too is that it's when he comes be, back. Yeah, it's also got to be tough though because you got to look around, going who's real, who's not. When your own brother fucks you up, I know. You know yeah. And then you got to put cannot, your brother to jail. I cannot imagine. That's what this. I mean. Oh, it's God. like it's like so like who do you trust? And as Dan Cook, like how do you leave the house? And the yeah. thing is, all it takes is one bad. Uh, encounter with someone and, and you're an asshole. Yeah, yeah, right, right, That's right. That's what right, he's. Right, I've right. heard him in interviews before say, you know, I work really, really hard in the meet and greets to be on like that yeah. because if you are good to somebody in person one time, they are fan for life. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's d- yeah. discovered. And I completely agree with that. Um, and I, you guys know my friend Sean X Pac Waltman. Yeah, um, he talks about, he remembers like. Smoked a joint with him in 2001. He I'm remembers, sorry. Uh, X Pac. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. You're friends with X Pac. Yeah, one yeah. of my one of my best friends. I love him That's so much. Um, awesome. He's, he's the been best. On, you know how many times he's been on the show? I actually yes. Never. Not yeah. a once. Not a once. Her, her, her best, like, her best friend. He's one not of my a, close not, friends. Not I love, a once. He's... Yeah, and you used to be a writer on WWF. Yeah, WWF. That's when. That's when he and I uh, hung out. Yeah. So, go ahead, tell your so, story about the person who's never been on the show, please. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, seems he like talks the about. <laughs> he talks about one one fan that he knows is out there that he was a dick to not a dick to but was just not in the mood yeah. and yeah. and it's like haunted him yeah. because he's like I I know that there was one person I think they were at a bar or something and the guy came over talking he was just like not now man like whatever it was because he's having a day or yeah. some yeah. kind of thing and there's nobody else he's ever and literally he thinks about that one yeah. person yeah. and I just can't imagine I have off days all the effing time. How often do I come in here and Christian's like, oh, you're in a mood yeah. today. If I and you're had looking for to, some shit when I say oh, that too. Yeah. looking for it. If I, I, 
Oh, dang cook, I, um, man, to yeah, have that kind of yeah, attitude. Yeah, no, I, had a, I had a bad encounter one time because I was I was kind of having an off day, and it was Ashley and I, and we were walking, and somebody came up, and they were like, oh, my God, I'm so excited to meet you. And she was she was in love with Ashley. And then she looked at me, and she was like, I didn't really like you, but I like you now because you're with Ashley. And then I kind of – I was like, what yeah, I don't say? really like you either. <laughs> And she was like, nice. and I was like, I'm just joking, but oh, I was, but it was like in a sense, like, cause like, she, why, like, do you, why do you say that? To yeah. Someone? Yeah, yeah. I get it. And then I, I, get it. and then she, I was like, I'm, I'm joking. And, and then it was fine. But Ashley was like, you can't do that. And I was like, no, I know. I just, I had a moment. You what was know? her face well, like? Was she like, what? You're a human being. Well, and I get she, it. Oh, she, yeah. I felt so bad immediately. Cause she was like, and because you could tell that she didn't mean any malice behind it, but it was just but like, like you got to be careful what you say. Yeah, yeah. Sure. she know, feels like she Again. knows me. Well, it's like even yesterday. I mean, this, so this morning with that, and I and I tell myself I'm gonna stay out of the Facebook comments. You, I don't. And I, this morning, like this, the, uh, Roxy wrote this wonderful, wonderful piece. Thank on you yes. so much for uh, pushing it that out, Christian. That was, it was so nice. One, of you. What about Game of Thrones? Right, and there were a couple people, and a friend of mine yesterday too. Even uh, Geek Girl Diva has tweets. Tweets matter. I wrote yesterday. I tweeted out. Or that I thought that Game of Thrones was getting um, a hated because it's popular type of thing. Some people took that as if you have legit criticisms, then you are in that category, and that's not what that's I said. Not what, not, yeah. and not even all. And that's what I t- and and because because Geek Girl Diva wrote me back. She's like, I don't like it, and, I, and now you're dismissing me. I'm like, I wasn't talking about you. If you if you hate, if you are hating to hate, and that then you are lumped in there. If you have legit criticisms as fans, that we are entitled to criticisms. Of course, we are entitled to them. What you're not entitled to is the way that you, that you just throw out. Statements, sexist, and hatred for no reason. Then you'll be lumped into it. And so, so, so when we yesterday, when when you, I posted that thing in, in the Facebook group, and then there was one guy who tweets, he's like, see, see. And, he, and he wrote the comment to where it was, um, well, Roxy says all these things, but yet she says write your own script, and that's I, no, that's not what she's saying. She's no. saying that if you if if you have legit criticisms and you say, well, I don't necessarily like this because this and this, you're entitled to that opinion. You can have that opinion. What you're not, it's it's the entitlement is mm-hmm. what she is writing about, is what we're talking about, but not everybody gets that. You're like, well, what you're saying is we can't have criticisms for the things we love. No uh, one is saying stop. that. No. no one is saying stop. that. And it's like, and it's and it's it's it, that's what it comes down to. So just little things like that to where you want it's like because that is no different from when I'm on the Facebook group and this particular person who watches this show every day. Yeah. And when they write that thing, I'm tired of it to where it's just like the I didn't really like you. But I didn't like what you wrote, and I wrote it back. But you're not in person. But it's still, it, to me, the same thing. I oh, had that moment this thing. morning. Yeah. But doesn't it ever bug you sometimes that those people, three percent, four percent of like the fan base or the people that interact, right. and those are the people that just get to you. And and sometimes so I think about yeah. that. They're guy, so loud. I, see, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't categorize this guy as a troll. I really wouldn't. I, a, I, I don't think he was a troll. I think he just didn't <laughs> get what you were saying yesterday and what we were saying yesterday. And no matter what <laughs> I said, that's not the point. He, st- he was stomping his hands down or putting his foot down. Yeah. Going, no, that's exactly what you were saying. And it's not. People, somebody read my article and then tweeted at me, uh, Adam Gerler and Mike Kalinowski, because we're the host of DC Movie I've News. I've heard of that and, show. And yes, and was I've like, heard. you you started that show. Oh, I, I would hope you'd heard it. Absolutely. And they they tweeted us being like. This, exactly this, Roxy. This is why you should have a voice and Mike and, and Adam should not have a voice and you should shut them up. And I was like, what? Right. No, what? I agree. what? How I, do you take my words and use them against me and, right. and, and not understand a single thing that I said? How? Like, I have, um, I mean, obviously I'm not as big into the movie world as you guys, but like, I even, I love Endgame, but I have criticisms of it, but I'm like afraid you're to good even criticisms. vocalize yeah, it. Yeah, good criticisms. But I'm, I'm even afraid to like say because people would be like, you're a hater, da da da. Yeah. Or just like give me shit for not thinking that the movie was no. Absolutely we talked about perfect. it. I mean, I, Jared was one of the first people at the premiere that I ran into. Yeah. And we talked about it. And I remember after leaving that conversation, going, "Oh, so a lot of a lot of great points." Um, not not and again, didn't agree with a lot of them. Yeah. But I didn't go, "You're a fucking asshole. You don't know the movie. Fuck you. You're never yeah. coming on the show again." Imagine oh, yeah. if I would have had that. That's that's kind of what that's the internet. Yeah, yeah. I just saw it yeah. again on Sunday, and I I, I doubled down on them. Wow. So, you, so you liked it less? No, no, no. I liked it. I liked it more the second okay. time, and I, there was more times where I cried. I think it was just oh, okay. more the moment got to me. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I watched it back, and still, you know, I still don't like so some of the should. decisions they made in that movie. Can I say a legitimate criticism? John Paul Jones. What was his name? Mm-hmm. John Paul Jones. You got it, bro. Okay, good. My John legitimate criticism is we're screwed on this table because I don't know whether it was Dane or what, but I feel this leg is down. 
Yeah, and it, I'm, I'm shaking. It's you know what? Crap out yesterday. It no, crapped crap out, out. Uh, in the middle of the live rule of two. That's it what I heard. Went crap. That's what I heard. Here's except, how you know it's not okay. And I'm like, this thing is going. That's what I heard because yeah. someone, I guess, took a. It was, it's like live on. It was like live on the show yesterday. There someone, it is. Oh, look at this. There's the culprit. So, oh. you, so you know this leg is not where it's supposed to yeah. be. It's, last so leg. it's in my hand. I will say it's a it's really last great leg. looking table from above. Yeah. Like, looks great. It's garbage. It's got right? a little dip, though. You're not seeing it. Yeah. It's I wonder complete, if that's noticeable on camera. It's complete garbage. I'm, I'm keeping it the way it is because I think it would be a good bit if it breaks in the middle of the show. Maybe yeah. we can convince uh, the powers that be that this is why Brett needs to be here. Or, why do I feel like you're going to throw that at a soldier at King's Landing? I know. Or just maybe on the schmo down, like, you know, just have someone come in here and, like, yeah. choke, slam them through the table. It's not a bad Hi. idea. I don't know what's going to happen in, uh, in Houston, though, because if you look... Booker T, for some reason, taking... I know what's going to happen. Booker T taking Andrew Guy's side, which is interesting. Because um, he's a guy girl. Uh, that was... Uh, that was weird. Hashtag guy girl. He says, why was that weird? Well, why is it weird for Booker to take Andrew Guy's side? Booker yeah. T says, Andy guy that, guy. says that Great Andrew question, Guy Jared. was the one who was betrayed. He was betrayed. And that, and that it was it was Ben who betrayed him and Facts. not the other way around, which is interesting. But Booker is well, also... Well, you're a little biased on this one, aren't that. you? The slap heard around the world. I I don't know if I'm biased as much as seeing pretty clearly and not <laughs> not buying into the act. Yeah. All right. Well, mm. any, ah. either, either way, Booker says that he's going to uh, walk to the ring with Andrew Guy, which is interesting. That's awesome. Can't wait. There's also and I, I, this will the, the, from what I hear that Booker has made it. Uh, there's there's no Mark Riley allowed in, in Houston anymore. Um, there is no. Uh, well, that's it, bullshit. Yeah. There is no uh, uh, Tom Dagnino. I'm. I'm sorry. You're you're telling me this now, live on air. Well, we were gonna Thank you. we were gonna announce it. We were gonna announce it, but um, man, he finds out he's not invited to the wedding. Now this. Yeah, no, no. The Booker Booker made it clear that he does not want. He does not want. He want. They want it to be because of Andrew Guy. They want it to be man to man. So it's just gonna be Andrew versus Ben. There'll be no Robert Br- Meyer Burnett. There's no McWeeny. There's no Dagnino. There's no Riley. It's just the two of them. Although Booker. What will do you want, think about that? Uh, it's Booker's arena. Booker's a lot. Booker also said, and he said that anything that happens inside, and I agreed to this, anything that happens inside of that ring, uh, it is no longer my jurisdiction, I was, minus the trivia. Minus the trivia, because the trivia the trivia is, is mine. But mm-hmm. uh, no suspensions, nothing can come out of this particular event that I'm allowed to do because Booker has made the rules. So who is going to be there? Right now, it's... it's the Founding Fathers mm-hmm. versus Double Toasted. Yeah. That will happen. And then Andrew Guy versus Bateman and and Booker T will walk Andrew Guy to the ring. That is that is what is happening at the moment. That is it. And we don't know if anybody's walking Bateman to the ring? He's not allowed to have anyone to, to the he's ring. He's not allowed. Booker is there to make sure that it is just he's going to have Guy there and it's just going to be Booker T making sure that, that it just stays that particular way one-on-one. How about so how Jen? G- is she going to be there to make sure she's asking all the right questions? Don't you be mean to Jen Serger. She's I'm gonna, not that. I, I just she, said asking all the right will, questions. She will be answering all the questions. She will be doing the post interviews. Yes, Jen will be there. So that Good is going to happen. Good for Again, her. these are the new stipulations so that good. Booker T put down. There'll be another if you if you watch the uh, the Kevin Smets versus Hector Navarro match, which is up on pay, Patreon right now. You feel the tension, anticipation. It's a lot of it. You can get tickets to showdownlive.com or you can watch it. You can watch it. Get tickets to showdownlive.com for May 18th. I wouldn't miss this one. I really wouldn't miss this one on uh, live streaming because you don't want to get spoiled on it. So get your tickets. You can get them now. Yeah. I um, wasn't going to miss it, but apparently I am now. Now, so. now you have no choice. Uh, great. You can watch well, online with me. Well, the true story is that we also didn't have money to fly Riley out, so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so here, I apologize. Um, it's 11.40. It's his birthday. He's not the one being in Houston with us. It's 11.45. Oh, Let's take birthday, some, buddy. we'll take some yeah, phone thanks. calls. We'll take some phone calls from, uh, from the Dane audience. Cook calls in. Imagine if he did. It'd be That'd funny. Be so good. It'd be funny if he did. I think, uh, Dane, if you're listening. I don't think he'll ever think of this show ever high again high. until he comes back for his, his next appearance. You know what my favorite thing happening in the chat right now? People what? joining the show right now and seeing what Roxy is holding and having no, no idea, idea what yeah. it is. It's uh, good. Like somebody just ran away. What the fuck <laughs> is Roxy holding? In case good. Christian steps out of line. She's going to throw it into my chest. No, yeah. Christian uh, I have no problem with. No, that's good. I'm very excited and nervous about this, uh, this one-on-one, though, with you. Why are you nervous? I don't know where you'll go. When, and this is next week? Next Tuesday? It's going to air this Friday. Oh, it's airing this Friday. It's going to air this Friday, yeah. It's going to air this Friday. So, um, when are we taping it? Uh, tomorrow, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So, so you guys get your questions in so fast. When, so when, you get, uh, when we get out of here, if there's particular people that you want to talk to, interview, then uh, I will give you that information. But if not, then who cares? Uh, <laughs> Matt Serra, UFC, former UFC welterweight champion of the world, will be calling in on Thursday. 
to yes. talk about uh, well, Endgame. I know. I'm not he won't be here. Day. It's okay. Mm-hmm. But we follow each other on social media. It's fine. Do you? Yeah. yeah. He's great. I love I love Matt Sarah. Do He's you, awesome. Were you yeah. a UFC guy? You weren't a big UFC guy. No. No, okay. You I'm don't not a like... big UFC guy. I used to watch WWF and then WWE, obviously. Never got into UFC. Okay. Uh, Too real? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big... Uh, I, I saw, like, a guy uh, I, as a young kid on YouTube or something, like, they both went for kicks and their shins hit. Oh, and, oh I know. It was, it was, like, shattered. Oh, right? it was yeah, the yeah. most disturbing thing. I was I like, that. I'm never watching that again. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. I watched, like, Conor McGregor fights. You know, I'll watch the big fights. Yeah. Boxing, I'll, you know, I watch, obviously, Mayweather McGregor. But You're I'm not big in guy. Oh, big spectacle yeah, yeah. guy. But, yeah, I'm more, like, on the sports side of it. I, I, yeah. All right. Riley, do we have any good news to talk about before we get into the phone call? Uh, I mean, good news. <laughs> any news. Any, there's news. Uh, Daniel Craig injured himself, and they suspended shooting on Bond uh, 25. Oh, that's big. What kind of injury does it say? Uh, do do? He was running, and it was one of the last shots. And <laughs> yeah. so I don't know if they're shooting out of order. And this is coming from Variety. How but old he, is he now? I don't know, 70? No, he's going to be 55? This is, this is why Daniel you Craig's can't actually... do the Tom Cruise. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you are 51. above, I don't know, 35, like... Yeah. You, well... I mean, Cruz is still doing. Cruz injured himself on on, on I know. Fallout. That's what I'm saying. You can't do the Tom Cruise, yeah. even if you're Tom Cruise. I yeah. feel like a lot and of guys are doing their stunts though. And it is an ankle thing. He fell awkwardly during yeah, a, a run, a, and he wow. said he was in a lot of pain. They flew him out of there to get X-rays, and they were they were in Jamaica shooting. They just started, and they were going to wrap it and then go to Pinewood. And so they suspended Pinewood until further. Interesting. Until we so know we don't know the happening. extent of the injury. We don't know the extent. When was it supposed right to come out? Uh, was it, that wasn't this November. It was next November? No, I think they moved April 8th, 2020. 2020. Yeah, okay, so then, well, it's definitely not coming out April 8th, 2020 anymore. Well, it depends on what if he's like up and out. Next maybe week. they shoot all of his. Sh- maybe they, well, they suspend it all together, right? They suspend it right now per, yeah. per uh, but why finding not just, out what happens. Why not just shoot all the shit that he's not in? Is it that bad of an injury? Mm. I don't well, know. Well, it, it all depends on location. You know, right. if there's no location that he's, that, that he's not in. in. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm sure they will. I'm sure that right now it's like they have to stop and, and go. What can we do? Right. What can we do? Remember when Harrison Ford got hit by the Millennium Falcon thing? And yeah, the I feel Force like Force Awakens. They had to lot. move stiff stuff around, so yeah. I think they'll probably do it here. Right. Well, but it's just this this poor Bond twenty five. There's it's a lot, been a lot of pissed. issues. You pissed. You're pissed about this. I'm pissed, pissed about Bond twenty five. So hit Jared with that, that that thing then. I'm just pissed. I'm gonna spend all my time tweeting about it. Right, how you're pissed. Uh, okay. Are you a big yeah, Bond person? You pissed? No, she's just pissed. She's social media pissed. I've only ever seen. One Bond. Uh, what? Which one? It was Goldeneye. That's uh, you've only seen Goldeneye. And, and uh, great one to watch though. It, it is a good one. It, good one. It wasn't great. <gasps> Uh, what? Wait, that's the one that was the video game, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's why yeah. I picked that one. It was the fine. greatest video, video game. game. Yes. Yes. video game. I watched it last Silent year Sir, for the first time. Oh, yeah, all, all the time. The time. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I used to play the video game. That's why when right. I was when I was dating Ben, we he was like, okay, you need to watch it. This is crazy. Pick right. anyone. And I was like, what, what about the Skyfall. video game I used to play? So that's why we picked it. And I watched. And I was like, God. you gotta watch Casino Royale. So it is really me, good. That's my favorite Bond all time. I don't time. get the Bond. I don't get the Bond thing. Maybe it's because I don't, haven't watched them. But like, guys, I love John Wick. Yeah, I oh, yeah. love see, John Wick, you know and I, like, I feel like Bond doesn't do that. See, the f- he's done what four? I think the f- his first and the third. The first one was Casino Royale, and the third one, Quantum Solace, yeah. uh, Skyfall. The Skyfall. Skyfall. Skyfall is great. Skyfall, Skyfall. Skyfall is my favorite out of them. I think that because it's a little. Did you like the Bourne movies? Yeah, I love the see, Bourne movies. It's a little movies. bit more. Th- this one is a little bit more kind of mixed with Bourne meets Bond. Yeah, which especially the first like first two. Make first me a three. list of the ones I should it's watch. It's directed by Sam. Ones. Skyfall is directed by Sam Mendes. Yes. Oh, okay. So yeah, you, like you would you would really like the the, f- the first the yeah the, the first one and the third one I don't oh. like the second one at all I think it's shit what about Quantum the Madonna sucks, one yeah. die another day <laughs> which one is that the Harry Valley one that's, oh, that's Pierce Brosnan don't that's, watch that one no, yeah. that, no that, that, you'll never watch a James Bond ever again if you watch that really? one really yeah. yeah. oh, okay. Golden Eye for Pierce Brosnan yes, and then it. move on to Daniel Craig yeah for yeah. sure are you, a, are you a big Bond guy no I'm a oh, way okay. bigger Mission Impossible guy okay because I love Mission Impossible that Tim Franco that Tim Franco you like it fucking love it what Mission Love Impossible. It. Well, but Tim Franco, who's revealed as Stacey Howard's partner, right? He he took oh, that came, mm. he took James Bond. 
He took James Bond as a category and, and just wiped the floor related to the party with Dude, that James category. Bond is such a difficult category. Yeah. There yeah. are so many movies. Mike Kalinowski is great with it, too. He is. There, yeah. So we're, we're talking about doing a James Bond exhibition match. Mm. And I would probably put it would be Mike versus Tim. And then there's one other person who's, who's like a sneaky Bond expert that I don't want to reveal yet because mm. you never see it coming. Uh, no, newbie or veteran? Vet. Huh. Yeah. Well, you saw you said there's some hesitation. So like no, kind a of a vet, but not a vet. No, definitely a vet. Oh, okay. Definitely a vet. Um, but well, that'll be something. But we have tons of exhibition, really good ones coming out. If you're not part of the Patreon, you should. The way that that works is if you're at the uh, ten dollar patron level, then when it comes out, the day that it comes out, usually at the last day of the month, you get the exclusive exhibition match. And if you're not, then a, a week later at the $5 tier, you get it. And then two weeks after it originally airs, you get it at all levels, so the dollar tier and whatnot. And this month is the Harry Potter match. And I can announce, um, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i announce soon, I'm actually have Bibiani announce the uh, the competitors who are in that match, but it's it's good. It's a good Harry one. Potter? Yeah. Is there Harry Emma Fife? Potter. She is, Emma Fife is producing it and calling the match. Rachel Cushing? She is not in it in this one because she's training for her match against the uh, odd couple. Hmm. But there's gonna be some, uh, I can announce that John Roca is in it. Mm -hmm. uh, Roca's in Harry Potter? Yeah, uh, Kim, huh. Hort Kim Horcher will be in it. Mm -hmm. Nice. What's this, I'm not going to Houston? Who is this person? It's obvious. Yeah, yeah. I'm not voice. going to Houston. So, Bob Finstock. Yes, no, you you are not going. Houston. Tom Dagnino is on the line, and why are you on the line? Weren't you weren't you in studio? No, well, I can hear it, you. Out yeah, he's isn't right next it door. interesting how we weren't talking anything about him, and and, and he yet still pops in, and yet he's trying to get in. Just open the door for this. This is like a so. horror movie. Yeah, do you, he doesn't have a microphone, does he? No. Oh, no. there he is. There. On the phone in studio. Should I hang it up? Should I hang it up? I don't know if you should hang it up because... Uh, no, do you like an echo? Yeah, yeah it's fine. The one, the one oh, and only... I want to call your chair right be here. more like Tom. The one yeah. and only compliment I'll give him this entire time is his pretty cool shirt, man. Yeah, well, and he was probably and he's pretty quiet for the most part. So, yeah. Riley, let, let, cool let's let this imbecile shirt. move yeah. up a little bit Wait, here. Wait, so too. we're both not going to Houston now? Apparently. So, no. Who's going? We had to approve the flights, and the flights won't... And and the bottom line... Kayfabe, uh, are they bringing in the mic? Oh, there we go. Kayfabe aside is that we didn't have the budget for it. But also, the, okay. the, the, the main thing is that Booker T um, was approached by Andrew Guy, and Andrew Guy wanted it to be a one-on-one -on -one match. No managers. No, he can't have Burnett there, and he's not going to have McQueenie. And he said, if that's the case, then you guys should be banned also. Booker T, it's his arena, and Booker T has banned you guys both from, from the arena that night. Okay. Now you so, know how it feels. And you're not getting... You're not yeah, like, I don't, I don't hear anything, anything wrong. I don't know if that microphone's on. You gotta turn it on, maybe. Oh, yeah. well, I don't know Did you guys turn it off? Whatever. No, it's on. Oh, it is? This is what a live check, check. studio yeah. podcast just, looks am like. I, am I on? Yeah, you are. Just talk loud, okay. will you? So, but that's... I mean, yeah, it's Booker T. It's not okay. working, Cody? Here. I don't know. I'm not being okay. right. That's no. fine. That's not the worst thing that's ever happened. No. Thank you, But it's Booker T's decision, and we're gonna stand by it. Well, um, look, and we don't have the money for it. <laughs> oh, I, I had a story with Dane Cook. It was interesting. What is it? Oh, you saw him God. today? He hit on my sister at Dublin's the one night. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, when you came, when I was performing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. DMX was there, too, who also was hitting on my sister. Do you have a hot sister? Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's pretty big cute. booty. Yeah. Um, but weird. she wound up going home with Jason Statham I, that I night. can't move past what just happened. What is this? <laughs> you guys are all going to just let that be so out there. I, I heard it, Rox. I'm not on mic. Well, she's got a big booty. She's got which. What's he going to say? Okay, if my brother said ever booty. said that about me, I would never look at him again. Yeah, Finstock, I'm, I'm with you. You just took a weird to the next level. Jet Stryer, I'm, I'm oh. stating facts. Oh. I, I, I'm like, if Jet Stryer really? said you had a big booty. Did you see what he tweeted when I had the Playboy yeah, article? Yeah. He said, "Thank God, because if she was ever in Playboy, I would never show my face again." And then you come in with your sister as a big booty. I can't let that Wait go. A so what you're saying is, if your brother. They said, hey, what do you think Roxy's best feature is? What do you think he's going to say? What if he says, my like, hey, personality? personality. <laughs> okay. What is she? Oh, she has beautiful eyes. Is that weird? It's less weird than just kind of being. Great hair. I mean, <laughs> what, I mean, oh my God. unbelievable. Anyway, she oh went, my she wound God. up. She wound up. Uh, Jason Statham took her back to my house. What was this? Is this true? The same night. Is this true? Yes. And she goes like this. She goes. She goes, yeah. Some English guy was in the car. I don't know. I don't know who he was. He Statham says he wasn't in, even a big thing. Back no, then, no, he wasn't. Uh, uh, was Italian he nice? job didn't even come out yet. No, was he, like, nice? he said he's an Italian job or something. I was like, I had never heard of that before. And uh, she, you know, obviously, six months later, she was like, oh my god, that's the guy who drove me home. I'm like, yeah, that's Jason Statham. So she was on fire that night. Dane Cook, DMX, and uh, you know, the homie. Like, do we Jason have a picture? Statham. 
I want to see. Not of her booty, just of her. She was here for three weeks. I saw her once. Yeah. When? No, like Sounds in like, like 2004 or 2005. Yeah, she, she, she was, well, she yeah. was with a bunch of other friends, and they were partying like yeah. rock right, stars. Listen, listen, listen. So that's that's the bottom line. I can't. Um, I do. We have a phone call, though. Cody, was somebody waiting on the line, correct? <laughs> All right, thank you. All Is right, it about I, this? I don't know what it's about, but we're going to find out. Hey, you're on Collider Live. <laughs> Who do we got? And do you think... Uh, hey, guys. This is Nick from Michigan. Hello, Mick. Do you, how do you feel about uh, Tom saying his sister has a big booty? <laughs> uh... Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Thank you, Mick. It's, it's, it's I mean, it's stating facts. We were all just going to... You guys were just going to move forward. I Roxy, can... we, we don't get along sometimes. I'm with you we're on this. Oh, thank God. Yeah, because right. I have this a sister and I went, dude. Are you calling... Are you <laughs> calling... What do you say, like, nice uh, feet? Yeah, you, are you calling to talk about the big booty or you got something else going on? Oh! Uh, I was actually going to ask you guys... Um, since all the, I personally didn't like the Game of Thrones episode from last Sunday, but I think I still love the show. But I just thought it could have been better. Very um, loud. That being said, fair um, fair criticism. How do you guys feel about like if Weiss, if Weiss and uh, well, I left a super long comment on the last video about like my like pros and cons about it, so I won't I won't reiterate that. But I mean, seeing as how Beanie and Weiss did awesome with adapting to, like the first four or five books or whatever. Yeah. And then they kind of like, they fell off a little bit after they took over the writing, but it was still good. So would you prefer like, cause they got their own Star Wars trilogy. Yep. Do you want them to adapt something or do you want it to be totally original? Thank you for the call. Good I've, question, I, I've been, I have been uh, screaming from the rooftops that I, uh, what I would love for them to do is to take at least some stuff from the Duke Carpetian novel. Yeah. If they're going to incorporate Bane at all, which they might not, because if this is, because there might not be any novels that, that go back into the, uh, this far back into the old Republic to where I think it's going to go. What are you still thinking about the big bird? I can't. All right. All right, let's, 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 we only have five on. minutes. Though. It was we a beautiful article two by two minutes. You. I read your article. It's, it's, it's eloquently written. It's a nice I'm try sorry, to swerve away. Yeah. About yeah. a minute. All right. Listen. Yeah, we only have a minute. All right. So stop talking about the big booty. I, I was talking about it. I can't on my face. We cannot going to be able to answer this poor motherfucker's question if you keep. I, yeah. But, I kind of want to see it now. Just you want to so see like, the big booty? Like, like, <laughs> this was like 15 years ago. She had two kids now. All right. Fine. You know what? We'll have to pick it up on another time, guys. Uh, we got cut off here because of the big booty. I just don't understand. Uh, Benny Off and Weiss, I believe, will have their own trilogy in the Old Republic style a long time ago. Uh, formation of the Jedi and the Sith. We will see. We'll see if it's worth a damn. I think it will be. But thank you to Mick, our phone call. Thank you to Roxy, Jared Sorry, Havon, Mick. Uh, Mark Sorry. Riley, Dagnino, Cody, Alex, and of course, our guest here today, Dean Cook. Um, please, please go on over and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. Go check out... Uh, Bobby Finstock's brand new episode of Little Bobby and the Juice, which dropped today. Go check that out. And get those tickets at SchmodownLive.com. You can go and check us out. We'll see you tomorrow. My name is John Paul Jones. My, my name is John Paul Jones. My name is John Paul Jones. My friend.